Welcome, adventurers from this plane and beyond. Uh, this is 20 Chronicles. This is our very first stream, show, pilot, everything. All of it. It's all happening all at once for us. We are very excited. We are glad you guys are here to join us. Um, and I'm thinking, to kind of start things off, just a bit more information for you guys. Let's get to know everyone at the table. Uh, I'm, I'll go first. I'm going to, you know, introduce myself, say a little bit about D&D history for you guys, uh, personally, and then a favorite. I want a favorite from you guys. Favorite anything. Color, food, book, anything. Okay? And we'll go clockwise. Clockwise from my perspective. Ending with you. Clockwise from anyone's perspective. Sure. <laughs> oh. uh, <laughs> I mean, not if you're looking at the stream. That's fair. <laughs> and not if you have a digital clock. Validated. <laughs> Boom roasted. All right. Uh, my name is Dominic Williams. I will be uh, the DM for this stream, this campaign. Uh, I've been in Dungeons & Dragons for about six years now, and little did I know how much it was going to drastically change my life. Um, my favorite season is autumn, so I'm kind of living my best life right now. Nice. Uh, I'm Zachary Haspani. Um, I've been playing D&D, &D, I don't know, a couple of years. I started mid-pandemic. Great time to start. <laughs> um, I'm a, a teacher, an actor, uh, and uh, my favorite person <laughs> is my wife, Brittany. Aww. 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 Gross. <laughs> I really thought you were going to say me. <laughs> you were a close second. <laughs> <laughs> the script just got awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my name is Brittany Law. I'm an actor and uh, graphic designer and marketer. Um, I've been playing D&D now for around two years, and I love it, and I love these guys, and I love that guy. So it's going to be fun. I have a lot of favorites. But right now, this, this is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> this is right here, my favorite. All right. Okay. Um, I'm Daniel Einan. Um, it's CTO of 20 Chronicles. Um, I am... Also a fourth degree black belt and uh, used to teach martial arts. Um, it's a black belt in Taekwondo. I've been playing D&D &D for 12 years, something around the ballpark of that. Um, and my favorite color is orange. Hi. <laughs> well, it's not that funny. <laughs> My name is Keegan. Um, I've been playing not necessarily uh, Dungeons and Dragons for the last 12, 13 years. I started with Exalted. Um, it's very much uh, an anime RPG. If you, if you guys have played it, it's pretty awesome. Fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing is anime. <laughs> <Weird>. <laughs> Loud and proud, my friend. <laughs> Loud and proud. Is it really? No. Oh. I mean, it's one of my favorites. I don't know that about you. Yeah. Really? Don't let him have a favorite thing without All I talk like, about is questions. anime. <laughs> my God. How are you talking about his D&D? &D? Anyways. Oh, this is going great. <laughs> uh, are you done? Is yeah, that it? I'm, okay, I'm, all right. Hi. <laughs> I'm Lauren Osborne. Um, I am... Probably the noobest noob here uh, at D&D uh, &D land. Um, I started playing with some friends online during the pandemic like two years ago, um, but this is my first big campaign, so I'm very excited about it. Um, let's see. My favorite thing is my dogs. I have two fucking rad dogs. They're not our official mascots. There is There can be only one. So it's a Highlander situation, so. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and I just... Love being here with all my friends. <laughs> Yay. I am a friend. <laughs> oh, yes, I am a friend. <laughs> Hello, I am friends. Uh, I am Paul Steinborn. Uh, I have been playing D&D &D for about the same as you guys, two years going on. Um, what else do we talk about? Uh, our favorite things. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's say um, my favorite scary movie, if you consider it a scary movie, is Jaws. Mm -hmm. I like also one of the best movies ever made. Indeed. Yeah. In my opinion. I've never I, seen it. I can confirm. It's very good. Worst mayor ever. He's terrible. Worst mayor. Yeah. You should have been in the war for that. Yeah. <laughs> Congrats, worst or, mayor. Organ, organ fire. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all remember way more he, details He at least should have been brought to, like, <laughs> like <laughs> right, oh, brought to court by the citizens. Somebody they need a bigger one. I found That's out that there is a horrible Christmas movie out there called Santa Jaws. And I'm... What? Yeah. Someone was talking about that today. Watch party. I can't remember who it was, so but weird. yeah, I think it's really good. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, 
I kind of wanted to uh, give a little bit of insight as to just essentially what to expect from this campaign. Uh, this is a homebrew world. Uh, little did I know I was building this when I was in middle school. I just didn't realize it was Dungeons and Dragons. Um, this world is very near and dear to my heart. It has gone over many a changes uh, in just the past couple months. Um, a lot of homebrew here. Um, custom rules, custom calls. Uh, we are a far more role-play driven table. Uh, do not worry, there will be combat. Uh, but my fights are never without purpose or reason. Um, yeah. That's kind of all I have, though. How are we feeling? Let's, Let's jump nervous, in. Nervous right. as hell. I'm ready. Let's just <laughs> jump in and just get <laughs> yeah. With that, sit back, relax, grab a snack, and get ready for camaraderie and, and shenanigans. Hee-haw! <laughs> 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 I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> we are a well oiled machine. All in. All in. <laughs> it's all or nothing. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the world of Remnant. A plane left over by the gods after the planar wars ended roughly 4,000 years ago. The gods in an attempt to end the conflict, end the fighting, and expel all planar entities from the material plane, launched themselves out as well. And while it made it harder for entities of darkness and evil to make their way back to this place, it made it harder for them too. Civilization rebuilt, kingdoms were established, kingdoms fell, time The most recent events, however, saw a drastic breaking in the established barrier. About 125 years ago, give or take, the demon blood lord, Orcus, demon prince of undeath, made his way to the material plane through... <laughs> through... A very devoted cult. A group of ragtag heroes banded together and with assistance from nearby kingdoms and allies, they managed to thwart uh, Orcs's rise. And in a shocking turn of events, completely killed the Demon Prince on the material plane. What happened afterwards and where his remains are now is anybody's guess as you don't really want that information floating about as hearsay. 125 years passed of peace and prosperity, and in that peace, an age of magic is beginning to herald forth. But there are groups, individuals, people working in the darkness, and it is in that darkness that we find a handful of souls all coming together. What they will decide to do from here is anybody's guess. And as we fly through the earth, digging further and further underground, we come into a small empty chamber bit of torchlight flickering in through iron grates. And laying on the floor is an individual. Daniel. Oh, crap! <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, I knew it! <laughs> if you would Only like to describe your on character, that. Oh, man. For everyone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no Start pressure, off. no pressure, right. no pressure. Greetings and salutations. <laughs> I am Professor Wilson Olafir, a, uh, let's say, middle-aged Aladrin. Um, I hail from the Bright Seed Academy, one of the most forthcoming institutes of 
knowledge within these fine realms. Uh, I am a professor and instructor there, mainly focusing in the history of the world, mainly in how wars and battles have shaped its path, its course. You often find me walking around campus with my hair pulled back into a very tight and long ponytail, my silver half-moon spectacles, um, and I often wear the robes that I graduated in, uh, draped over my other formal clothing. They have a very nice diamond pattern and uh, furs to keep me warm in the winter. Um, I tend to go about from country to country exploring and tending to find any knowledge that I can of weapons used in these ancient battles. Uh, so I wear my chain mail and have my trusty shield with me, although most times I often have other people doing the fighting for me. Let's be honest, I can't get all this stuff dirty. <laughs> although I guess I seem to have found myself into a very filthy predicament. Now. As you're beginning to think that, you're picking yourself up from the floor at this moment, and you find as you're thinking about these wonderful, wonderful garments, these wonderful, wonderful weapons, they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> you find yourself without your equipment, any weaponry, any armor, anything of potential value or danger has been taken from you. And as you're feeling the effects of Whatever it was they hit you with, that put you in this state, I want you to note, and you can put it on your sheet, you have one point of exhaustion. Oh. <sighs> Ouch. That's not great. He would. <sighs> Professor, what do you do as you begin to sit up? As your dark vision starts to adjust and fade. You're catching bits and pieces of where your dark vision is, vision is needing to kick in, um, but often you're seeing now these metal bars in front of you, but beyond beyond that, on the ground, up above you, into your sides, uh, with a decent amount of space, there is uh, stone, not worked, natural, almost like that of a cavern. Uh, and past these bars, you can see faint flickering torchlight just outside of your view. You don't see the torch itself but you can, you can discern color out in that direction. Okay, and this is like my own like singular cell? Um, roll perception check. First roll, first roll, first roll. First roll. Uh, you stop it. You don't want exhaustion. Crap! You don't want exhaustion. This is an eight and a 16, so uh, total of nine. Nine. Okay. You're... You're shaking off the fuzziness. Your vision is kind of coming in and out. Uh, and it kind of knocks you off balance and you accidentally uh, step on something that is not this cabin floor. It's a little softer. Um, and as you look down, uh, Keegan, if you would describe your character for me, please. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> lying on the floor in a, what can only be described as hot mess <laughs> <laughs> is a Shatterkai of sorts. Um, a mess of curly hair on his head. Uh, he's kind of curled up into a ball um, with some lovely clothing that seems to be kind of flowing about on him, even while he's lying unconscious. Um, he's kind of stirring here and there. And when you see his cheeks, you can see some lightning marks coming from the eyes, uh, magical markings that seem to glow and move on their own. Um, yeah, he doesn't have any items on currently. No items, no equipment do mark that you have one point of exhaustion. Okay. I see where this is uh, going. You step on an individual's ankle. Uh, and it's not <coughs> terribly painful, but yeah. oh, like interesting thing to wake up to. So I'm like, oh. <laughs> what? Oh, who are you? Uh, oh, it's just a few more minutes, please. I'm just trying to get some sleep here. Just Our show is not till tonight. Just a few more minutes in sh show. Good sir, have you dragged me into some sort of theatrics? Is this all some sort of 
clever ruse. It's you're not trying to prank me, are you? He's looking about while you're talking, just in a daze. Where the fuck are we? No, 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 that can't be right. This can't be some kind of prank. I remember. I remember coming back and forth. It was a ship. I got hit by that. Philip, Philip, please, please just relax for a moment. Who, who might you be? Oh, who am I? Well, I am Professor Philson Olympia. If you've been anywhere near the Bright Sea Academy, perhaps you've heard of me. That's more than a mouthful. Can I call you Phil? <laughs> I'd prefer, I'd prefer Professor Phil, if you must. Professor Phil, of course. <laughs> this is not Doctor. <laughs> Looking on it! <laughs> give me a moment to get my head straight. I'm still trying to figure out what exactly happened. Well, in the meantime, who were, who were you? Oh, of course, of course. You, you can call me Kylas, or Kai for short, if it works better for you. Kylas. All right. Kai, please. <laughs> I'm sorry, I fear I don't know you on that level yet. <laughs> we can get there, Gargis. I see you have my tastes. <laughs> but, um, where are we? I'll kind of like sit up. Is there any like chairs in the room or beds or anything? Or um, we... Yeah, as, as you're waking up and you kind of sit up and you look around, there is uh, a wooden. A plank of wood. A large plank of wood. Just on the ground, just about the size for a medium humanoid. Like, is it a plank laying flat on the ground? Yes. <laughs> Four seasons over here. As you look a little closer, it does look like there's metal nails embedded into the stone. This is your bed. Well, I suppose that this comfy piece of furniture here is mine. You can find something else. <laughs> And I scoot over to the... <laughs> it's wood. Perfect. <laughs> well, we well, seem to have found ourselves in quite a predicament. Hey. Tell me, do you remember anything before you got here? Remember seeing anyone? Particularly someone with palish gray skin. <laughs> Can't say that I have. <laughs> I was in a different situation. <laughs> there were orcs and sort, but yes, yes, there were. <laughs> but if we're gonna be here for a while, we might as well just sit back and relax and chat. You said you're a professor of sorts. Yes, I am, quite, but uh, I don't think this is a time for just an idle chit-chat, I mean... I'm sorry, are you going somewhere? <laughs> oh yes, I was actually on my way somewhere. I have some very important... Well, now we do seem to be behind bars. <laughs> and, I believe unrightfully so. Uh, hello! Okay. Hello! Uh, Where are our captains? Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> <laughs> Brittany. Is at this point you start to hear some yelling that stirs you awake. Would you please describe for us your character? You see a uh, five six um, a humanoid young woman um, in her mid twenties um, with um, lavender uh, wavy bob, and um, she has um, she shoots awake, and you can see her um, her really. Uh, purple eyes um, and her purple eyebrows and she has um, freckles across her face that are white and shine and twinkle kind of like stars. Um, she seems to have this like ethereal otherness about her um, almost like she's like bathed in a soft moonlight at all times. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's very um, you know toned and um, like very like physically fit, but um, at this moment, she's when she shoots up, she's 
Hello? Hello? H hello? Oh, oh, another voice. Uh, you, you out there. Are you our captor or are you also a prisoner? Oh, this is perfect. There's two of them. Uh, I, th I, th I think I'm a prisoner too. D where? D do you know where we are? No. I was hoping you. We're in a prison. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it doesn't take a degree to figure that one out. Oh. Oh. Does anyone... Oh, fuck. Is, 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 is there a man with you? With, with, with golden hair? Curly? Your hair gold? Curly, but it's white. <laughs> uh, no, can't, uh, can't say, unfortunately. I have a curly white-haired fellow, but... Handsome, handsome fellow. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you seem rather quite pleasing to the eye. <laughs> okay, is Thanks, this love. is this a <laughs> is this a joke or am I being pranked over here? Are you guys you, still on a date? You no, know, I thought that at first too, but I actually you thought we were on a date. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> I do believe that we are in a rather dangerous predicament. Tell me, what do you remember before waking up here? Well, there were, there were these, these men in my friend's room and they, I don't know what they wanted, but uh, they threw a knife at me and I, oh shit. I think the knife might have been poisoned. To note, Nesta, mark that you have one point of exhaustion. Oh, I feel great. <laughs> Um, can I see anything in my... Roll perception check. Thank you. You are at a disadvantage. Oh. 14. 14. Looking about your space, you kind of come up to the bars and you kind of peek around. Looking down uh, towards the right-hand side, you're seeing where the torchlight is coming in. There are torches off to your left-hand side. And there's another one kind of right up against the wall where um, your your cell is, essentially. There's another cell directly across from you. Mm -hmm. uh, and looking inside, <clears throat> you see um, two individuals, uh, both currently laying, laying down, either sleeping or unconscious. Um, one of them does have curly, bright blonde hair. Mm -hmm. uh, another individual who is laying there, Paul, if you would like to describe what Nesta sees. You're not necessarily awake yet. I'm in the cell across from her? Yes. All right. Um, You're laying down unconscious. Uh, Wolfgang is laying down, face down, smashed into the <laughs> ground. He's a very heavy guy, so when he was thrown in there by his captors, I'm sure it just smacked down. Anyways, um, Wolfgang sort of like stirs a little bit, and pushes himself up on his knuckles, Gets to kind of his knees, looks around, stands up, and then just stands there. Uh, kind of looking around, discerning things. Um, he is a very uh, tall, about six and a half feet almost. Uh, he stands very straight. Um, uh, his hair is what would... Not jet black, because there's no jets here. Raven is black. There we go. Uh, Raven's black. Uh, and uh, in his youth, it would have been very perfectly black. And cool. now it's, uh, well, no, it's you know, his hair is always pulled back from his face. Um, but it used to be jet black or Raven's black or whatever. Now it's you know a little salt sprinkled in the pepper there. Um, he's middle-aged, um, not too old, but, you know young enough to fuck some shit up. Um, <laughs> he has a very easy scowl on his face, almost as if it's something that he always has on his face. Um, gray eyes constantly just, you know, looking around, looking at everybody, kind of makes it. How light is it in here? It's very hard to see. The, the main bits that you're able to take out right now is only due to the torchlight within this space. Uh, you will Can I see her? You can, yes. Okay. You can make out faintly how she looks. Um, he has one of his most uh, distinguishing features is his very thick black mustache. Uh, yes. Very Bob Belcher. 
Uh, <laughs> uh, thicker, yes. n- not as not as sad. Did you say porn stash? Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yes. He has done porn. Um, <laughs> that is not canon. <laughs> you can find it on our. Looking around, he you know has. Oh, he is a human, by the way. I should mention that, being as that he's the only human in the group. Um, How do you know? I know things. Um, I know you. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Unable to see very well in the dark, he collapses a hand to his chest, and a light source springs up on the ceiling above to help illuminate. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, With your height, it's easy to reach the ceiling. The ceiling's maybe seven, seven and a half feet up for you, so you just, boom, you pick a notch of stone that's kind of pointing down a little bit, and boom, uh, creates this overhead light for you. Uh, The individual next to you kind (sighs) of... What? Where? Who are you? I could ask you the same thing. You're big. You're not. <laughs> Thanks for that. Nesta! Oh, well? Nesta! Oh, thank God. You're he okay. kind of runs up to the bars and just, Are you okay? Yes, are you? I mean, I mean. Who were those guys? What guys? The ones that brought us here, I assume. I, I don't, I, I never saw any guys. Do you have a stone? What stone? No, 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 I don't. I don't know where it went. Hi, sorry. Um, on that note, Lauren, as you begin to stir awake in the same cell that Nesta is in. Oh, I didn't even. <laughs> Directly party. behind you. The party cell. You <laughs> Wait, the who cell am I in? You are in Nessa's cell as you start to wake up due to quite the commotion starting to stir. All right. Uh, would you like to describe what your character looks like for us? Yeah, sure. Um, you see an unconscious uh, lady. Uh, her name is Red Gwyn. Um, she's lying on her back on the bed. And uh, if you were to observe her, you would see that she has a humanoid shape, but she is actually a Gith Zarai. So her skin is a pale green. Uh, she has markings on her face and on her arms. She has elven type, like an elven type of ear, but they're a little longer and a little bit more like, um, like it almost looks like someone took a bite out of her ears. Um, she has like a darker green set of sort of like really tightly braided not quite dreadlocks, but like big braids that go down and a ponytail behind her back. Um, she's probably about, I don't know, five, six, five, seven. You know, slender, but with a good booty. Um, so. <laughs> Which you use to sit up. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which, when All she opens things. her eyes and sits straight up, looks around twice, jumps up, goes right for this bitch. <laughs> Puts her arm around her, drags her down to the ground, and says, Who the fuck are you? Where the fuck am I? What is going on? Lady, girl, lady, please, fuck. Just to know for both of you, you both have points of exhaustion. Yeah, I did. I assume this much. Okay, yes. uh, you can go ahead, Zach. <laughs> uh, I know as much as you do. I know as much as you do. Well, I don't know anything. Who are you? What's going on? I don't know. Can you let go of me? And I pull the tigger off me. I let her. Okay. I let her. And I just look at her and I go, Where are we? What the fuck is this? I have no fucking clue. And then she looks around a little more and she sees the bars of her cell and she just starts to lose her shit. She is just like, No! 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 Not again! I can't do this. I can't do this. Whoever you are, wherever we're here, that's it. Nope, get us out right now. I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. I don't want to be in here. Let's go. Let's go. What are we going to do? What's the plan? And you thought you had the problem, guys. <laughs> Ranglin, calm. They are panicking. As you hear off in a cell at a diagonal, uh, the voice of Dark. 
Dalric? Dalric? Yes. What happened? Are you okay? My leg is still broken, but beyond that, I'm far. How far away are you? I can't see you. It's because I can't come to the bars. Are you in there by yourself? No, there's a small one with me. On that note. <laughs> Zach, <laughs> would you like to describe what your character looks like? Uh, yeah, As so the echoes start to, and your consciousness begins to come in. I, I hear this frenetic screaming coming from a couple doors down. Uh, I hear the phrase "small one." And I know immediately he's talking about me. Um, you see, lying on the floor in the fetal position, um, a little two foot ten gnome with gray purple skin. Uh, bald head, hairless, uh, long ears, longer than Elvin. Um, and he's wearing uh, what one might presume to be prison attire. Um, a tattered undershirt, uh, brown pants, uh, very simple, uh, very worn clothing. Um, and as his senses start to come to him, he sees uh, a source of light, uh, I presume. Uh, Vaguely kind of past the bars and to your right. Okay, uh, and then I look around, do I notice the other torch light as well? Um, at your current angle, you would see like the beams coming off from the right hand side, traveling across the wall. It almost starts to reflect with just with how far the light spell goes. Okay, um, so. But you see sitting off to the right, sitting down, one leg stretched completely out, with pieces of wood attached to either side and then wrapped with leather is a slender, very slender individual wearing pretty much very tattered clothing uh, akin to yours almost. Um, but it's a pants, it's tunic, uh, his boots are missing. Um, completely shaven bald head, points, pointed ears, green skin, almost a, a nose that has fallen flat against his face uh, with these uh, markings, these black spots that kind of travel across and a couple down his neck. So yeah, so so seeing the light, seeing other light, my eyes shine a little bit like a nocturnal animal, how they reflect the uh, uh, any sources of light. Uh, and I naturally uh, turn a away from it. Uh, you know, I'm right on the on the the brim of adulthood. Uh, and uh, and so this this young man, um, uh, attempts to hide in the corner. It seems like the little one's awake. What, how close is that cell to my that cell? That cell sounds like it's directly to your left. There is a thick wall of stone from what you can tell, but the sound is coming outside of the bars. It kind of echoes within the area, and you do. You can hear this voice to your left. You there? Yes. I'm glad you knew I was talking to you. Um, <laughs> describe the little one. Uh, small, maybe two feet, pointed ears, bald head. Frog end? I don't know. No, I, I'm <laughs> calling for him. Oh. Um, so I reach into my pockets, um, realize my book is missing. Yes. My component pouch is missing. Yes. I <clears throat> attempt to, to cast a message to Wolfgang, and I can't. So... I just stay silently in the corner. It, he started fidgeting. Keep, ask him if his name's Frognand. <laughs> I can't believe I'm a messenger. Is your name Frognand? Just nod. He's nodding. We don't have time for this. Derek, do you have any idea what, why we're here or how to get out of here? This isn't, please tell me we're not back. We're not back in the same spot, but definitely the same scenario, at the very least. Is it him? I don't think so. I think it's something else. I can't be in here, Dark. I can't. I can't be in here. Then we'll get you out of here. We know where we're going. Um, hello! You voices out there! Yes? She's leaning up against the bars with her head on the bar. Speak! I am! Well, today. Oh. <laughs> to, to, today, Junior. <laughs> uh, pardon the interruption, but um, might any of you have any 
relevant to recent memories before you all woke up here? Anything worthy of note that you can think of? I was riding a bird. I said worthy of note. <laughs> it was a big bird. <laughs> I'm well aware of she is in the area. Does anyone else from the class have anything to add? If, oh, if it's relevant, I remain conscious throughout most of this. Oh, well, I dare say that's better than what I assume most of us. My ally Rangwin over here and I were attacked. We had met some humans up in some frosted mountains. Um, we were checking out their airship and later that night, I believe, we were attacked by what looked like a, the corpse of an owl bear. Oh my. Did you say a wreck of an airship? I mean, I don't know what it looked like before, and I've never seen that style, but yes, there was an airship. Sunk into the snow. Sounds like my ship. Or at least the one I was on. Hmm. I'd ask what day that was, but... That's pretty irrelevant in here. I'm not entirely sure what day it is right now. So. Exactly. Uh, do you remember a sort of, like, cloaked, hooded figure who dressed in dark robes, but he had a, a pale gray, sickly skin? No pale skin, but robed individuals, yes. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I encountered them as well. My friend over there. The little one, as you called him. Yes. All right, well, frogman. I remember being tossed around from various ships. I don't know whether they were air or sea. I mean, where I was traveling from, I came by boat, so I'm assuming it was on a sea ship. But I vaguely remember seeing someone like that while I was being transported. I had gotten some information from my research, and then a lowly dastard snuck up on me. As they're all talking, Ren Gwyn is just frantically walking around her cell looking for anything that might offer her an escape. Roll an investigation check at disadvantage. Um, could I look at well, like, the bars and the surroundings of the cell? Sure. Um, roll an investigation check. I'm looking for anything okay. in nature. Uh, I will say investigation or arcana. It's your choice. Uh, since it's magical in nature, Arcana will be a lower DC. I'm gonna go with a 12 for me. Uh, with a 12, you're not finding much. Um, these wooden boards that are essentially functioning as where you would sleep, they're they're nailed in pretty well. And that's all that really is there in the room? That's all that's in this space. I'm going to see what Nesta might have on her. Hi. I'm just going to walk right up to her um, and basically an frisk her. Yeah, you're getting frisked. Uh, yeah, oh, hi, uh, whoa, hey. Um, um, my Do you son. have nothing? I have nothing. Uh, Did they take our things? I looked like That's they That's generally what happens yes. in jail. Um, oh, because you've been in a lot of jails? Is that how it is? I've guarded a few. Sorry, what, what's your name? I never caught it. Rengwin. Rengwin. Here, um. She sits down on the you? stool and just like... It starts kind of rocking back and forth. Do, um, do, do you need help? Um, how do you, can you see I need the to dark? fucking meditate, can you, okay? Oh. I need to just fucking align my chakras or some shit, because this is, I just, just, could you stop talking with the mouth? Thank you. And then she, like, takes a deep breath, and she's gonna, like, assume her stance, cross her legs like Dark Totter, and try to just fucking chillax. I'm going to, um... <laughs> look at the four people who are around me, um, or is it three people around me? You have, so essentially, let me give a, a more clear Thank depiction you, yeah. of what you can see. Within your cell, mm -hmm. as you look out the bars, there's a cell off to the right-hand corner of, of your view. Mm -hmm. There's one directly across where uh, Wolfgang and your friend is. Mm -hmm. And then there's another cell off to the left where you could hear the professor and a, a very sarcastic and very nonchalant voice. <laughs> <laughs> Um, beyond that, you're not sure if there's more cells to your side. Um, you weren't hearing anything from over there, but that's okay. essentially who you're picking up right now. Okay. Um, as you're kind of looking real quick, with a 10, 
you see scratchings and markings along the bars. You're not able to make out exactly what they mean, as your your persuasion was never that necessarily the arcane. It's not your specialty, but you can probably tell there's some sort of enchantment placed on these bars. Hmm. Well, some good old testing and field work won't uh, resolve. Uh, I'm gonna take a few steps back, and I will hold. Uh, will hold my hand out and start um, whispering and just a little aura will envelop my hand and then it will fly off as I use magic initiate to cast mage hand. And I'm going to have the mage hand just try and go through the bars. As it reaches the bars it dissipates. That and I could try, but uh, it could get sticky if it doesn't go well. Oh, bother. As the professor ponders over Nesta, what is it you were wanting to do? I wanted to share um, my eyes of night with him <clears throat> if he's willing. Okay. Um, What's the range on that? Um, anyone I can see within 10 feet? Within 10 feet. I will say across from you, there's there's a decent gap of space. Okay. Um, the only p- person you could really share it with is mm-hmm. Raylan. I don't need it because I don't got need it. the dark solution. Never mind. I can share it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wolfgang walks up to the bars and tries to like oh. test them a little bit and see if they are they completely sturdy, like no give, no shaky shaky anywhere. Um. I mean, I got I had to have been put in here through a door. Oh, there's, you can tell there, it's not just bars. There is a door. There's actual hinges that happen so the on there, sh- and there is a locking mechanism on all on all these points. But the door itself is barred, so you can see past and through it. Okay. I'm going to go to the door and literally try to just do something with my burly arms. Burly arms. <laughs> roll an athletics check. At disadvantage. No. Which I keep forgetting to ask people to do. <laughs> Um, how does a 17 sound? 17. You you feel a good, solid shake, and it kind of echoes throughout the chamber, um, causing the uh, curly-haired individual to kind of... <laughs> backs up a bit. Um, but these, they're, pr- they're pretty tough. Okay. Wolfgang just kind of takes a step back, and arms across again, and just stands there, waiting. Well, Professor, how goes the investigation? Well, I'm afraid the results don't look that great for us. Um, I tried to send a mage hand through the bars and it just very easily dissipated. I see some etchings on them. It seems that there's something anti-magical in nature. Can I hear this conversation? Roll perception check at disadvantage. Mainly because they're on opposite sides in terms of cells. <laughs> <laughs> Two natural ones. <laughs> oh, 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 no. uh, the dude with a broken leg is terrifying you right now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, poor thing. I have a. I'm scared. Yeah, it's scary. Yeah. That could get us out, but it's depending on how the rooms are written. I don't know if those rules apply to this situation because what I'd be doing isn't necessarily a spell like well, I'm maybe more thinking spell, and less thinking a... out loud <laughs> <laughs> at that point you all hear a door open I come out of my meditation <laughs> the second you come out of your meditation Nesta you feel a pressure leave your head that you didn't notice before until she stopped. As you come up to the bars and look out, you see an individual walking through. Um, as soon as that door opened, I killed the light. Um, stepping through, from what you can tell, it's a little hard to see within this lighting, is a male tiefling. Uh, kind of charcoal, grayish, blackish skin. Um, horns that kind of curl upwards and have like a slight split at the end. 
um, yellow eyes, stands maybe a little over 5'9", reaching 5'11", roughly. Um, a whip at one side and a uh, saber at the other, um, dressed in relatively tattered clothing, but is wearing a bit of armor, kind of piecemeal leathers that have been thrown on, uh, comes walking in. Behind them comes around a small green uh, individual with kind of this flattened nose across their face, almost like an almond-shaped head, pointed ears, greasy slicked back hair, and this sinister little creepy smile that appears on their face. Um, commonly known, these are goblins. Um, stepping through, the taller one. References to all of you. You all getting comfortable? I hardly say so. Who exactly are you? What are you doing with us? My name is Dalith. I wasn't actually expecting a straight answer to that question. <laughs> this here is Vez. <laughs> I am Vez. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you're asking, I could use a few more pillows, maybe a comforter, or something down, and easy for me to rest on. <laughs> There's a jokester amongst them. <laughs> I eat the jokester. Not currently, no. Don't. Don't. Just don't. Don't push your luck on this. Creepy little fella, isn't he? I'm still sitting on the... the I'm still in my meditative stance, but I've, of course, woken up, and I'm staring mm-hmm. daggers at these guys, and I just say, What do you want? Why it's are not, we here? It's not necessarily what I want. It's what my boss wants. And we need workers. So, you're here to work. So, you poisoned and kidnapped all of us. I mean, I didn't, but someone did, yes. What kind of work? Mining, mainly. <clears throat> There's a nice deposit of gems and ores in this mine that need mining. Redundant. But nonetheless, you get my point. Please don't make my job harder than it needs to be. Please don't try to escape. Don't run away. Put on the cuffs like a good prisoner. And this is going to be a fine relationship. How they call this a relationship seems rather one-sided, wouldn't you say? Mm, it's still a relationship, just one-sided. He got you there. <laughs> hey, manacles ready? I said manacles ready. Yeah, we're getting them. All right. One at a time. I'm going to have each of you come up to the bars. We're going to put manacles on you. And you're going to rotate. You'll move back. We'll get the next one. And then we're going to make our way down into the mines, where you will work. And we'll give you all some equipment. But if you aren't built for working? Mm. You'll build muscle. <laughs> all right. Who's up first? Oh, well, might as well get this over with. I'll Broken leg, you're of no use to us. You can stay there. We'll deal with you later. I look at Nesta and I go... I'm still trying to hide in the corner, by the way. Well, so I'm, trying to <laughs> I'm going to use one of my racial abilities. Uh, my whatever the fuck it's called. My Zwiffniblin camouflage. To give myself advantage and yeah, straight so it's out. a straight roll, yes. <laughs> As you are in Rocky Terrain. 24. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> All right. That was a disadvantage? I rolled a nap. Uh, roll. He I has a racial ability that cancels it out, so it's a straight roll for him. All right, everyone up. Wolfgang's already standing there, you know, this far from the... Shackles are pulled forward. Like, this easy for me, big guy. Hmm. He puts one on. Put on the second one. Then he walks away. Put my hand... Kind of just put my arms to the across again. You don't put on the second one? No, it's still it's there. It's still hanging. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the little goblin will actually come over to you too, to your guys' cell, and has manacles. Who's fresh? Well, you know, um, I'll do it. Hmm. So, I, but I'm gonna stand a little bit back from the door, so he has to come into the cell. 
You have to step up. I know better. You're not tricksy like I am. <laughs> as Nesta, if Nesta is going to take a step forward, while she does, I'm going to try and just like drop down and like grab his little leg. And I'm going to try and the, put him in a headlock at the same time. Through the bars? Yeah, through the bars. All right. I'm, well, yeah, we're going to grab, try to, I'm going to grab his yeah, leg, grab, grab his ankle. I will say whoever wants to lead this grapple check can lead it with a straight roll. As normally, you'd be at disadvantage, but one of you is helping, so it'll be a straight roll, contested by my acrobatics. Who wants to go? You go advantage. Okay, I'll do it. Am I, am, you don't oh, have to roll. I go. Oh. It, she's she's getting a straight so roll. So you're getting a straight roll helping. because we had to. Yes. Okay. Natural 17 plus quite a bit. Uh, as you reach through, he kind of. Uh, with that, goblin is this? I know what this is. Okay. Um, as you fail to grab him, you feel a sharp slash across the side of your face oh. as the individual who was standing within that space has a whip out in their hand as oh, you shit. were lacerated across the face. Oh. And you take uh, five points of slashing damage. Uh, oh, no, Nars, fucking help me! Start off. Some of hey. you seem to think this is a fucking game. So mean. Put on your manacles. You see, the pair of hands just. Let's <laughs> <laughs> go get him. He puts one on. The second one, please. Up. I'll step back. I'm gonna look over to Kylas and. Well, best way to figure this out is to go along and see whatever patterns and things we can figure out along the way. I'll follow your lead, Professor. In that moment, you do see. Um, your friend step forward and hands out shaking. Mm. Oh my, you're a special one, ain't you? Steps back. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be like, I will have kind of gone to Nessa. Is she bleeding or anything? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> she took a, a full-blown whip laceration. I will have torn part of my shirt off. To... With that strike, you can tell this person is very skilled with their weaponry. They hit her through bars. It wasn't a clear shot. He got a clear hit. So I'll be like kind of dabbing her cheek like with a piece of my shirt because I feel mm -hmm. pretty shitty that I kind of, you know, got her involved in my nefarious plans. <laughs> Um, and I'm just gonna look straight at him and be like, you feel like a big guy right now, don't you? No. Big guy with a whip. Just a guy with a whip. This isn't fun for me. I just do my job. Now do yours. I'll go and put my hands up. <laughs> he kind of looks at you and... I'm looking straight at him. I'm looking right in his fucking eyes. <laughs> Frank, we don't fuck around. Fire will do you well. Alright, I'll do it, but I won't look at him. We can handle that later. Walks away, stops and looks at you. Hmm. <laughs> 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 He's not smiling, though. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 a very serious glare. This is Paul's <laughs> But I'm having a hard time right now. He's so much fun. I was trying. There's a really moment trying. as they start to head, as this individual starts to head out, and they stop, and they... Did question, did Derek put him on? Uh, no, they said they would handle him later. Got it. That's okay. bro the broken, broken leg, leg is of no use. Um, what about this guy? There's an individual standing in front of your cell that's small. Well, you're a cute one, aren't you? 
<laughs> Be gentle, it's my first time. <laughs> first time for everybody. <laughs> Second one, please. Insight check. Is it his first time? <laughs> <laughs> Roll an insight check at oh disadvantage. Roll persuasion or deception, don't tell us which. It is Ooh. also a disadvantage. Unless you have something that's giving you advantage. 15. 15 insight. Well, a 12 and a 15. Nice. 19. <laughs> 19. Butts. Uh, butts. <laughs> might be. He's, he's a, it's, a little, it's a little dodgy to read. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, like, you kind of wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> Quite an interesting individual. Thank you. <laughs> Upon that, a group of about seven or so individuals come walking in, each one blades drawn to their side. Um, a whole mixture of individuals are walking into this space, and they all start unlocking doors and opening them. They start at the very, very end with you two. Can I spot what weapons are really? Uh, it's a it's a mixture. Some of them have long swords for some of the bigger builds. Uh, smaller individuals have like uh, short swords or uh, um, cutlasses, things of things like that. Uh, okay. Some of them have like throwing axes on their side. Some of them have clubs. It's a bit of a mix and match. But okay. they all, with your understanding of weaponry, they're fine. They're fine. They're it's a it's a weapon on them. Yep. Yeah. Some of them aren't very well kept, but yeah. It'll hey. still suck to get hit by one. Hey, Phil. Uh, excuse me. What Would you that? mind explaining a few things? First of all, what is mining? <laughs> <laughs> what sort of tools are we expected to use? Oh, don't worry. <laughs> I can explain it to you. Get I'll out of the cell. address that when you address me by the proper title. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Professor <laughs> Felsen. Yes. All of here. What's mine? <laughs> <laughs> ting ting! I can explain it to you. Get out of the fucking cell! Well, I'm sure you can offer a wonderful explanation, but I feel that in my studies I have a very robust understanding of the subject. <laughs> robust? Are you gonna mansplain mining with that guy? You're gonna learn by doing, get out. <laughs> and he opens it up and steps inside. Okay, I'm gonna. Actions louder than words, I guess. Single file. Lead the way. I'll step out. So unless anyone wants to try anything, one by one these cells are open and each of you are let out. Can uh, I like put my manacles up and just kind of look them over and see if they seem magical at all? Uh, yeah, go ahead and roll either our, uh, yeah. Arcana or Investigate. Yeah. I'm looking for like glyphs or anything like that. They're just yes. easily uh, If you go for Arcana, it's a lower DC. Okay, I'm going for Arcana. Eight. <laughs> <laughs> You've never rolled one of these before. Ooh. <laughs> Get a little distracted. These are hideous. <laughs> yeah, they're not pretty. Is a little that... rusted at the edge. Where is where's the guy who uh, whipped Nessa in relation to us? Is he still standing? From in the middle what of the you room? can tell, no, he left. He after he left, a bunch of people came in and started opening up the cell doors. Who opened up our cell door? Uh, a uh, female individual, uh, long pointed ears, uh, more delicate features, uh, potentially elvish, uh, and looking at her, yeah. your turn. The back of your head starts to hurt a little bit. Uh, but it fades away eventually. All right. Well, if we're going to be exiting the cell as we do, I'm going to take the bloody rag that I used on Nessa's face and throw it in this girl's face. <laughs> <laughs> Not my first time having someone else's blood on me. Go. She will shove you along. Ew. <laughs> In terms of marching order at this point, I'm not going to ask for it. You're being forced into it. <laughs> what on, what is the marching order? You, you guys are able, you guys are led uh, side by side. So it's you two, you two, you and uh, uh, curly haired blonde individual is brought out. Uh, there seems to be someone forgotten. <laughs> with, with, Ow. A, with a 24 stone <laughs> a level two. <laughs> <laughs> um, with a level of exhaustion. <laughs> with a level of exhaustion. <laughs> wow. You're, it's almost like you're in your natural terrain or something. <laughs> um, you are led out, and as the gate <clears throat> locks behind you, 
we'll come back to you. Yeah. As you and the individual uh, Darek is still inside the cell. The cell was never opened. Uh, hey, you, you, your name's Darek? Oh my god, I forgot you were in here. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, are you okay? Beyond the broken leg, I'm fine. Okay. Um, hey, I'm, I'm real sorry that happened to you. Um, you and your friend, um, you know, I, I don't think this life is for us, okay? I, I don't know who they are. I don't know uh, other than you have a friend, but you and I, we gotta get out of here, okay? <laughs> I mean, yes, I would love that more than anything, yeah. but the odds aren't exactly looking good for us. Yeah, we, we have time. Hey, it's okay. If I'm a gnome, if gnomes know anything, it's how to last a real long time, survive, do what it takes, okay? Um, I have an idea. Just give me a minute. I'm going to start casting ritually detect magic. Um, taking about 10 minutes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> give or take six seconds. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, I'll say you more than enough time. Yeah. To you, uh, would you like to describe what the ritual looks like? Yeah. So the interesting thing is I'm so used to doing this out of my book. Um, I have a set of instructions that I've carefully laid out that were taught to me and I've looked at over and over and over again. But even without my book, I'm realizing I've committed this to memory. Uh, and so I'm going through the space um, with my arms making uh, some very precise gestures that, that, um, that symbolize each school of magic. Um, some more fluid, some more explosive. Um, and, and after about 10 minutes, suddenly my senses start to open up. Um, though there's very little light in the room, I can start to see, potentially, um, some sources of, of, of auras here and there. The most immediate aura, aura that you catch is these jail bars and the door are enchanted. Yeah, and what? Heavily. Okay. So it is abjuration magic. Abjuration magic. Okay. Um... So, it looks like my usual tricks aren't going to get us out of here, but um, I'm also pretty handy with a lockpick. Can you find anything we can use? I mean, they took all my stuff. If we can splinter that bed, maybe. Okay. Are you strong? It's not so much strength, so much as knowing where to hit. He gets up and kind of hobbles over, and he'll... And he unleashes four rapid strikes into there. Um, I'm just going to make this a general athletics check. Uh, he is also exhausted. <laughs> that's, that's just way better. Um, yeah, he... <laughs> and cracks off two perfect pieces for something like this. He's like, I don't know how many shots you're gonna have with that before it doesn't work, but that should suffice. And he sits down. Okay, okay, you rest. I'll take care of this. We're gonna get out of this together, okay? I won't leave you behind. And I'm gonna try to inspect that, uh, the, the lock. Uh, and okay. no magic necessary. Are you just doing an investigation check, or are you just going for a thieves' tool check? Uh, I'll I'll try to investigate it first. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and roll investigation. Disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not a great roll, but a ten. <laughs> ten. The lock doesn't look impeccable, mm -hmm. but you're not sure it, what the interior might look like. You're also having a hard time getting a look at the front of this. You're gonna have to try and pick this from. We're going in a bit blind. Okay. Essentially. I'll, I'll go by feeling. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm going to try to just pick it. Thieves' tools. I am proficient. These are not actual thieves' tools. Uh huh. So you are not proficient with this check. Okay. So is it just a dex check? This will be a straight dex check. This okay. will be um, 
Yeah, straight d20 at disadvantage, mm-hmm. plus your dexterity. Cool. Ah, fuck. Five. <gasps> fuck. Oh, no, five plus dex, so eight. So eight. Mm-hmm. Damn, nice dex. <sighs> this is tough. This is really tough. Okay. If you try to push it further, these may break. Or you can try and save. I'll pull them out right now and think for a little bit. Okay. You can see the tips of them have been like worn down a bit already from trying to navigate the, mm-hmm. the tumblers and whatnot. Yeah. Okay, well, it's not working yet. Oh, well, shit. Let's just take a look at your leg, and then maybe when your friend comes back, she can have some knowledge. Knowledge is power, you know? Um, and we'll figure this out when they get back. All right, so I wanna I wanna try to take a look at his leg, uh, see if there's anything I can do to make him more comfortable. I probably can't heal him up much, but just to, to assist. Roll medicine check. Yeah. Not bad. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen. His leg is not actually broken. It's dislocated. Okay. And someone probably performed a shoddy inspection yeah. and just said it was broken. So I'll I'll let him know that. Um, I. I don't have much experience with your type of body, um, but it doesn't look broken to me. Um, is your joint maybe like popped out or something? I mean, if it is, I can I can slot that back in, no problem. Yeah, give it a try. And I'll just That's be reaching up trying to brace him. <laughs> I'm encouraging to just give it a shot on a broken leg, but. I'll, I'm here, I'll. I'll catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I can't wait. I'll, d- I'll, um, yeah, but it looks like he's about to do the moment of, uh, of, of popping it. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll try to let him think of, of, of positive things. I'm going to put, like, uh, this, this, uh, this gust of, of what smells really nice to me, but it might be kind of an earthy, decaying smell mm-hmm. of, of, uh, a really aromatic mushroom up into his his nostrils and just <laughs> just let, let him think happy thoughts. That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, I think you were right. All right, and then I'll help him to the ground. <sighs> help him to the ground. He's no longer moving at half speed. Great. Nice. Yeah. All right, let's oh, let's just sit, oh, brainstorm together, inspect the hell out of this place, and wait for our friends to get back. On that note, we leave out the jail doors. As you are walked through this space, you come out into uh, a main, uh, larger room area. There's a table off to your side with a pickaxe and a bunch of rubble and what looks like a gemstone sitting on the table. And then across from you, you see uh, ladders uh, uh, heading upwards uh, through a hole of like um, essentially an open uh, ceiling uh, hatch uh, that is currently open with ladders, uh, a ladder leading upwards. Uh, there's a red rug that's been destroyed and is off center within the room. A table there with a couple people who are sitting there currently eating a breakfast. Um, that's about as much as you can catch, unless there's anything anyone wants to do. Does it look like there's any like storage around here, like some like places that people might have taken our perception check at disadvantage? Can I check that as well? Yes, absolutely. I'd like to look at that gem and see if there's anything I know about how that gem works. You can roll a nature check or a history check, which is also a disadvantage. I rolled twenty-two. 22 uh, for, for seven. perception. A seven. <laughs> uh, you get distracted by the blood stain on the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> Seems a little fresh. Or the pen. Ten. It's bright purple. Hard to hard to tell exactly. Maybe an amethyst. Potentially. Um, what did you get again? A 22. A 22. Uh, what level are we? <laughs> with a 22, you see on that table that's sitting on top of the rug, there is a pack that uh, someone is currently looking through. 
Um, you don't recognize the pack necessarily. Who am I belong to? Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, a dagger kind of <laughs> rolls out of it. I'll whisper to her. Psst. Is it my dagger? That's your power. Okay. You seem like a dagger girl to me. <laughs> <laughs> Seems like they're rummaging through Fair your equipment right now. Oh, really? Potentially. Fucking really. I'm going to say, hey, hands off my shit. One of them just kind of looks at you and just... <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. And starts rummaging through it more. You guys are quickly, <laughs> continuously led through, off to the left-hand side, an opening. You continue forward. There is an opening down your left hand with your dark vision being able to see down there. You do see a dead end. Not everyone else does. Um, I definitely don't. <laughs> you definitely don't. <laughs> this, is, this has been a, a rougher experience, though with, with your perception within 10 feet. You, you feel pretty confident that you can navigate this space Mass, relatively un- undeterred. Um, you come into a much larger area where you see a big ol' mound of dirt has just kind of been collected. Uh, off to your right-hand side, you see a slew of pickaxes and lanterns. Um, each one of you is handed a pickaxe and a lantern. Um, and you are brought over to another hatch. Whoever hands me my pickaxe, I do a quick, like, to make him flinch. <laughs> Roll an intimidation check. Yeah. <laughs> uh, disadvantage, you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> I have to roll dice. Yeah. <laughs> I'm playing D&D. Ooh, Ooh that's nice, two 13, dude. so 14. 14. Uh, the, the girl you had thrown the rag at kind of tenses up a bit. Her abs kind of clench. And she... And then I just wink at her. Mm-hmm. She kind of puts the back of, of the blade, like the hilt, into into the small of your back and pushes you forward. You guys are ushered forward a little further uh, towards another hatch uh, that is brought open and you're told to descend. These manacles that we have on, mm-hmm. describe them for me. Um, they're they're uh, on the longer side, very, very thick. They kind of hit right into the middle of your wrist and then extend, extend about this far to the forearm. They are chained together how onto the other How thick does that chain seem? That chain's pretty freaking thick. Um, how much room do I have? You kind of get to... You have enough to keep your arms about parallel to your side. You can't really get to, like, there or here. Phoenix pretty wide. You are pretty wide, yes. Mm-hmm. Which is why you got bigger ones. Because while they do want you manacled, they also want you to be able to swing that pickaxe. Fantastic. But you don't need to put your, your arms right here for a pickaxe. This is perfectly fine. It's also perfect to find a swing it at someone if you wanted to. You're advocating violence against our captors? <laughs> I mean, I hit her with a whip, so... That's fair. <laughs> you did. <laughs> um, you were all brought down into this lower area uh, where you see before you a long winding path that, ex- that kind of breaks open, and as you're walked down it, you see sheer cliff down into darkness ahead of you. Look down in that darkness. You can't see are we outside or inside? You're inside. You're in a much more, uh, you're in a larger, more cavern- cavernous area. Um, the ceiling extends upwards. You looking up, your dark vision fails. You can't see any further than 60 feet. It continues into darkness. As you look down, your dark vision ends at 300 feet. Shit. <laughs> um, what's everyone's passive, excluding you? Perception? Yes. 10. Ten. 13. 13. 14. 14. You barely hear, barely hear the sound of moving water below you. Okay. Um, What's the temperature? Chilly. Uh, if if you had a little more light in here, you could see your breath. And then as far as the... Uh, Which doesn't bother you necessarily. It doesn't. And, but as far as the guards are concerned and such, uh, are they heavily clothed? As in, are they... Wearing like snow gear or things Not of that nature. Not full-blown snow gear, but they are wearing more than just a tunic. Cardigans. Yeah, <laughs> yeah totally. Flip a scarf around. Cashmere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Nice cashmere too. sweater. They're not. It's not necessarily freezing temperatures, but they're padded up a little bit more. They need enough though that they can continue wearing their armor. Okay. I will um, whisper to Ren- Renguin. Uh, I think there's water down there, but it's. I think 
it's probably over 300 feet down. Mm. I'm sorry, what? I keep I'm thinking about how this girl's face will look with a big old black eye. Sorry. Yeah. Water. Okay. Uh, don't know how it helps. Probably doesn't. I forgot to say. So what's the deal with your friend, the blonde guy? Is that your boyfriend? No. He's just a friend. Work. <laughs> that doesn't sound like your boyfriend at all. So, when we get out of here, does he need to come? I mean, the, the less, the better. I just gotta get Darek. I'm not gonna leave him here. Okay, so we need to get that guy too? Yeah, okay. You guys are spaced further apart rather quickly um, along this kind of curving path. There is a, uh, a rope bridge that extends to like a middle island. But beyond that, it turns into more darkness. You can't really see. Um, your lanterns are turned on for you and kind of set to the ground. Um, you're given your pickaxes, and you are brought to a large wall. And you're off to work. Psst. Phil, which side am I supposed to hold? You don't know. <laughs> oh, you're professor of sorts. I am. You <laughs> know that if you address me as such. <laughs> did you not realize that's what he was doing? I did not no, realize I totally, that's what he was doing. I totally know that's what he was doing. I feel like you're rather uppity about this. You see the others, though? Two gorgeous lasses back there. And that big fella. Whew. <laughs> I see, I think you <laughs> So I believe I figured this out. You're of the sort of students that I had who oh how did they say thought with their pants. <laughs> Quit say my pants. But... <laughs> Perhaps what's in it. <laughs> well, take the shop end and shove it to who knows where. Oh, relax, Phil. You're gorgeous, too. <laughs> Look, this is a tough predicament that we're in, but perhaps if we lie along for a while, we can figure out, and I'm going to kind of take the pickaxe and, like, feel in my hands and find some weak spots and I'm gonna swing and for someone very like slender and like kind of thin I swing this pickaxe with an insane amount of ease and like tempo behind it graceful 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 <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you could do work enough for both of us. <laughs> How about no? What's our lineup here? Currently, I would say it's it's uh, probably Kylas, the professor. It would be either of you two, whichever order you kind of want to go in, and then whichever order for you and Curly Boy. I would be at the end. In the very end. So probably he'd be, ignoring. He'd be further and closest to your group. You guys are spaced probably about 15 to 20 feet apart. Uh, along this kind of winding cliffside area. There's enough space. It's almost like a 15-foot wide uh, gap. And there's a number of guards who mm -hmm. kind of just walk along the space, just keeping their eye on you guys. Occasionally, they do dip and kind of leave you alone. They're off in the distance, but... So are we, like, up against, like, a rock face? There's a rock face ahead of you with uh, parts that have been kind of already carved away. Um, probably the initial indication of where to start. But you can start on any part of the wall. There are some ability checks here that will determine certain outcomes. Um, well, I'd like to know, you know, if I can, like, do, do, does my clothing have pockets? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so if I'm gonna, I'm gonna start 
kind of taking a couple swings at this rock face, but I'd mm -hmm. like to swing to get some small slivers of rock, small enough that I can like put them in my pocket. Absolutely. I, I would say that doesn't require a check. Okay. Um, I will say, however, let's do a bit of sleight of hand. Okay. Make sure you can get them in your pockets without things being seen. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, too. Can you mean Okay, Hell so yeah. that's an 18. Wait. Yeah, 16. I like that face. Oh, was it a 20? She's pointing at it like it's a 20. People don't seem none the wiser. Hmm. Um, Wolfgang's just laying into this rock. Lilas <laughs> <laughs> like, is. Oh yeah, just un uninterested in anything that's going on around him, mm -hmm. seemingly. Fucking hammering away as much as he can. Mm hmm. Uh, the curly-haired blonde individual is is doing his best. He's not that built for uh, something this strength intensive, but he's laying into it the best he can. Question: mm -hmm. um, When it comes to spells cast through magic initiate, mm -hmm. if they require material components, do you still need to have material components? I believe with magic initiate, it forgoes the material component for that spell. Uh, I don't think no? so. Oh, yeah. You just get a single use a day. It still requires the same thing. I think it still requires a material component. Um, I would say since this is a special scenario, since your stuff was taken away, even basic material components are going to be required uh, just because of the scenario that you find yourselves in. If you guys manage to get out of here, we can start to ignore that. But specifically, all your stuff was taken. So oh, it's going to be the cast of both. Yeah. The, okay. the text of this says nothing about foregoing material components. Okay, then yeah, it would require okay. any material components. Um, Kylas will do his best to dramatically imitate what the what Phil is doing, okay. but with very minimal, like his... <laughs> <laughs> uh, expunging very little effort. <laughs> Kylas isn't so much mining as much as he's chiseling. Yeah, yeah he's making it look like he's mining, though. <laughs> We're doing his best. Are you? You're spending more effort stopping yourself than hitting, but that's fine. <laughs> Maybe a little bit. <laughs> Before we go into this, we're going to go into our first break. Our only break. We only have one break. What? Not first. Break. Shut up. <laughs> Hit the button. <laughs> we'll be back.
welcome back. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we find ourselves with our, our group, or part of our group, missing one small purple individual. Uh, in the mines. Uh, now this is going to span over the course of quite a few hours in terms of what these checks are. What are we looking for um, in here? Your look, you were told to look for gems, any precious materials, minerals, ores, anything of that sort. Um, and it's less your call. People are going to be walking by and telling you where to strike, when to stop. If there's nothing really there, they're just going to let you do your thing. There's one thing I hate. It's a micromanager. Mm -hmm. Get ready for it. So, with that, I would like everyone, and since this is over the course of time, this will just be a straight roll, a straight athletics check. Since I'm acting like I'm working. Oh. <laughs> God. <laughs> Fine. Athletics it is. If you're acting like you're working, roll a disadvantage. Okay. Nine. Nine. Pretty, pretty sad about that. Yeah. Dirty 20. Okay. Pretty okay. good at that. Dirty Apparently not in this moment. Yeah. Natural one for the professor. That's, uh, that's pretty On good a straight roll? Yeah. Oh, wow. Sorry, buddy. You, you explode. <laughs> <laughs> you hit a grenade. 14. <laughs> 14? <laughs> faking it? Yeah. She's like, hey. better than mine. <laughs> I find a natural deposit of TNT. <laughs> Ringwin? She's distracted, so it was a four. It was a four. Okay. <laughs> Do you um, want me to add it, or is it just one? It's a nat one. Yeah, it's it's a it's a failure, unfortunately. Thank you for divorcing um, me. <laughs> Wolfgang, Rangwin, you two find an average hull. You're not really finding anything. I'm not looking that hard because I crazy. don't want to help them. Yeah, I don't. I don't give two shits about what yeah, I find. Yeah, yours is not necess Your failure wasn't necessarily like a lack of strength. You're just picking in the spot that doesn't have anything. Just smashing things. You're smashing things. I don't care. Um. Kylas, like the I'm born <laughs> child of privilege, you hit one thing and it's just, <laughs> it's just oh, iron ore. <laughs> it's just an avalanche of 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 uh, of decent materials, uh, and everyone kind of stops. It's just like we're keeping him around. <laughs> um, <laughs> professor. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, due to that check, this next upcoming one is going to be, uh, you will be a disadvantage for this upcoming check. Okay. Um, Nesta, you strike, strike. You're finding a good a good amount of materials as well over the course of time. I can't not put in 110% of Right. <laughs> <laughs> and you strike, and a bit of uh, wall crumbles away, and you see sitting in front of you is a very large, almost glowing blue gemstone. The Arkenstone. Oh, shit. I look over and I go, shall we put that in my pocket? I'll say before you do that, roll a perception check to see if you notice. Because you're also working. <clears throat> well, but not that hard as you, as <laughs> evidenced by my last roll. I may be a little It snippy. is a disadvantage. Oh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that was a nat 20. Um, but the first one was a 15, so... 15, yes. I, I will okay. say you you notice, you notice not necessarily the gem, but you notice that's a stop. I like shiny things. That, so anytime I see, like, an amethyst or a blue whatever, mm -hmm. I am going to be like... Mm -hmm. I look at her and I go, they don't have to know you found that. I'm really torn because I feel like I should give it to them. Why? They're dicks. Dicks, but it's like my job now, so. Can I try and take it? Is it big? Can I put it in my pocket? It's almost the size of a fist. Can I try and put it in my pocket? You can make great role play. Can I <laughs> it's still red. I want it. <laughs> yes, I will say with your with your perception that you rolled, you do notice a guard has noticed something and is coming over to you. Yeah, but I'm gonna do it real fast. Slide okay. of hand. Slide of hand. Do, Disadvantage. Do I see any of this happening? No. No. Do because you guys are kind of in groups. That's the only reason. They're okay. kind of interacting. Do I see the guard coming over? Nine. Uh, with your ah, jackpot, <laughs> like <laughs> okay. not really okay. no. Okay. Nine. Nine. Okay. You and you just hear, hey. 
as an individual is coming straight up to you. Okay, I'd like to real quickly try and put it in his pocket. Uh, no, pocket. I'm gonna try and intercept you and grab it and say, <laughs> I found this. Okay, do you let her? Yeah. <laughs> no. Was I ever involved in this? No. So you guys are kind of in clusters, so you two are kind of paired together okay. within 10 or 5 feet or so, and okay. then there's about 15 feet to another group, 15 <clears throat> feet to another group kind of thing. They're kind of keeping you together, so it's okay. easier to watch, Okay. but also not so one big group. So he's not like right next to us. Yeah, okay. not, not within okay. reaching distance, maybe tossing, but... So I never... She just grabs him from me. Though. Okay. That's... You grab it, and he kind of stops and looks at you both, and... Let's see. Which one of you found this? I did. <laughs> and a rather large deposit right over here as well. I think I could use some extra rations for the next few days. Hold deception check. <laughs> At disadvantage. <laughs> 17. Mark. He kind of looks you up and down. Yeah, I doubt that. That, I believe. We'll talk about that. Well, I believe someone's earned herself a, maybe a little something extra today. <laughs> is he going to walk Wait, away? This is holes, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Keep at it. You're doing good work. Okay, so well, what's your name? What's your name? <laughs> First one of the campaign. <laughs> Quinley. Thanks, Quinley. How do you know his name? You just asked him. You just straight yeah. asked him. Okay. As Quinley turns to walk away. He does not turn. He backs up. Okay, well, as he's backing up, okay. I'm going to cast Prestidigitation. And okay. make it sound like he farted. <laughs> and make it smell a little bit like he farted. <laughs> and I'm just gonna go. Wait, I can get the bell part real quick. Kyla's chuckles. <laughs> <laughs> Glares at you and walks off. <laughs> Storms off. Um, he kind of like adjusts his pants a bit. <laughs> that guy was gross. I'm sorry. Damn, how many guards are there watching us? Okay. Um, presently, there's there's at least seven. Uh, though the ones that kind of walk along, there's probably about three that walk along the path, and then three more that come through. They kind of do a little bit of a rotating. They're not all present at the same time. They're all down there at the same time, but they're spread out along this pathing. How many are there? Seven in total. Seven. Could I discern any sort of pattern to their rotation? Uh, go ahead and make an investigation check. At disadvantage, yes. Yeah. Right. I'm gonna stop saying. <laughs> Uh, 14. 14. There isn't really a pattern. <clears throat> the only pattern that you're finding is there's not an agreement. There isn't, there's no plan. They just kind of choose when, and that in itself seems to be a bit of a weakness. Okay. That they're, they're, not, could, they're not very organized. They're not very organized, yes. They don't seem like trained regiment soldiers or anything like that. They seem like ruffians. We ain't even been to Ruffia. <laughs> Ruffia? You don't know. Where the Ruffians are. <laughs> Welcome to Ruffia. Um, we're we're going to get the monetized. <laughs> uh, with that, with those checks, I need everyone to make constitution checks to see how exhausted you are. Is this a saving throw? It's not a saving throw. It's just a check. Okay. You are at disadvantage because of the natural one. 21. <laughs> 10. 13. 13, 10, 21. 21. 21. Is that a check, not a save? Just a check, not a saving throw. It would have been a 19. Dirty 20. No. Dirty 20. None of you take an extra point of exhaustion from this work. As you mine for about four and a half to five hours straight. I hate mining. <laughs> <laughs> On that note, we will fade out. Uh, if there's any extra role play you want to do in that time span, think about it now, but we will come back to Frogman. Nice. Uh, during some of your time down in here, 
a bit of time passes, light conversation happens um, before the door opens. So two individuals come walking in, nice. two familiar individuals. But before that, okay. one yeah. thing I want to talk You have plenty of time about. beforehand, so yeah. if you want to grab something. Perfect. Uh, so, so I've been uh, trying to inspect every corner of this fucking cell, sure. right? Um, specifically for... <laughs> <laughs> Do you want any like majorly detailed descriptions? I have the map. Uh, if any of this calls out to you. Okay. Um, so I want to look for anything that can reinforce the lockpick that I have in my pocket. Any, okay. any way to, to prevent that from being so easily damaged. Mm -hmm. I'm also um, snagging off some string from uh, one of uh, from my tank top. Sure. Snagging a piece of wood. Um, does, uh, um, what's his name? Does Darek have anything leather on him? He does. His, uh, it was, was, lap, was wrapping his brace. Yes, he right. does have leather. So mm -hmm. I'd love to ask him if I could have a small piece of it. Yeah, he doesn't need it anymore. Great. He gives you the whole thing. Um, I imagine I can find some dirt in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean it's a it's actually a lot of hard cavernous stone, but with a, enough well placed strikes from Darak, who seems to have <laughs> really top knuckles, mm -hmm. uh, he's able to produce a bit of dirt for so you. What cool. So I imagine. Until I get my component patch, this is totally Minecraft. <laughs> I'm gonna punch a tree until yeah. I can cast magic. Um, okay. <laughs> Here's the big two questions. Anything that either of us are wearing made out of fleece? <laughs> Roll percentiles. Yes! You, you, you okay. did this to yourself. I did, yes. I took away all your stuff. I would also... I, but I wanted you to get creative, so I would ahead. also love, uh, if, if included business roll, could be copper wire as well. <laughs> I, I would say copper wire is, is a definite no. That seems okay. valuable enough to take away. Balls. Okay. <laughs> Percentile 45. Yeah, there's fleece. Fleece! Yay! <laughs> I can do minor illusion, bitches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I gave it like a 35% chance of failure. Nice. Okay, cool. So, um, once I find... Oh, so and was I able to find anything to reinforce the lockpick? Um, are you thinking like metal in particular? Or? That's what I was imagining would be metal. Other, otherwise, metal perhaps I could embed some kind of stone into it. In I will way. say the only metal you find is the metal nails that are that are being used to embed into the wooden plank. Okay. That was since beaten up. So I could see if maybe if Dark could could. Uh, he can give it a shot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could try to pull out some nails. So disadvantage. <laughs> he he just he can't get his fingers underneath the top okay. with a natural twelve plus okay. not a lot. He's not the strongest individual. Again, he's he's dexterous and precise. Cool, no worries. Sounds like a monk. Um, but um, <laughs> all right. So then, once I'm able to to make that kind of uh, discernment. Uh, I'm going to ritual cast Unseen Servant. Okay. Um, and get a little buddy. Um, I imagine I can't do it outside of the jail cell because of the abjuration. Um, you were not able to discern... You were able to discern the school, but it doesn't necessarily mm -hmm. tell you what type of protection it's offering. You so just know it's from that So then school. I would attempt my first time around to do it outside the jail cell. If that fails, I'm gonna just attempt to get my unseen servant yeah, inside. I'll say for the sake of time, nothing happens, and then inside the jail cell, you feel you feel the connect. You don't see the creature, but you feel the connect. Okay. And you, and you know your unseen servant is present. Beautiful. Um, that's everything I wanted to accomplish beforehand. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, you see two individuals who walk in, uh, the same uh, mm -hmm. kind of charcoal skin tiefling. Yeah. Back into my corner. Roll a stealth check. Uh huh. Um, I'm going to burn my second Swift Nibblin camouflage. Okay. Straight roll. What? Na who? What did you say? One of the trains is here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, not bad. Dirty times. twenty. Dirty twenty. Okay. Uh huh. Ooh. He's from the corner. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Cool, cool cock maker. <laughs> <laughs> These are callbacks to an old one-shot. <laughs> an old one-shot oh, yeah, from two weeks ago. So long ago. 
the, uh, the, the tiefling individual stands up with uh, the goblin individual by his side. Mm-hmm. He pulls out a ring of keys and looking up and down at this individual who's still sitting, you know, just eyes locked. And mm-hmm. Up. Stands up. Actually, I might need to find something. Music change. Drama. <laughs> Go to it. Bring out the map. <laughs> Roll initiative. <laughs> Plant Space Invaders. Oh man, why can't I find this fast enough? DM faster. I'm sorry. Everybody just move in slow motion and they'll think it's a lag. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, you know, I'm just going to say it's true. Okay. Uh, you hear in your mind. Okay. Mm-hmm. If you're going to do something, do something fast. I'm gonna I'm gonna wait until I hear the click of that lock so I know it's unlocked. And the door's open. Door's open. The door's open. Great. And he was told to stand up. Mage armor. Okay. Which has verbal somatic immaterial, so I imagine I'm out of my stealth. Mm-hmm. Um so you see suddenly a uh this violet um lavender uh Aura just pulses over me for a quick second. Um, <laughs> and then. Fireball. <laughs> close! <laughs> um, I'm going to um, cast Mind Sliver on uh, the goblin. Nice. Yeah, okay. fuck Miz. The guy's uh-huh. a dick. <laughs> I will say, as you're doing that, the whip unfurls. You were not no. fully out of his sight. <gasps> he knew you were there. Right. Straight roll to hit. That's a 18. No. 18. Oh, with mage armor. Shield. Nice. Uh, it doesn't require materials. Correct, this is not. That's a whole <laughs> Yes. Oh my god. It's reflecting <laughs> off your piece. Uh, it's a mind sliver is a uh, is intelligence save. Intelligence saving throw. Come on, Troggy. Uh, I'm pretty sure I fail with a natural 12. Uh, there's there's no modifier added to that. You fail. Oh. <laughs> All right. Come on. Oh, Holy shit. It. I'm like fucking trembling. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it. You can do it. You can okay, do it. only three points of psychic damage. Okay. We got your back, but not really because mm-hmm. we're not there. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm hoping Darix is going to join me. <laughs> we'll see. He's a good bro. He's moving at full speed. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, how much was it again? Three points of psychic. Three points of psychic. <laughs> God, I'm yeah. the worst person to be like the, the a tanky. Like. <laughs> you got it. You got it. That shield, you man. got it. Yeah. You did what I could. You're in it now. Okay. Fuck you, man. It sounds like initiative. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Cheryl, right. let me get some music going. God, I'm like trembling. <laughs> <laughs> the first <laughs> battle is just poor Froggy. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And dark. And we'll play the NPC. Uh, I'll say within this space, we won't necessarily need the map. It's very small. Yeah, I get that. Um, so approximately how big is my space? My my cell. Uh, your cell is about 10 feet across. Okay, <laughs> great. And about roughly 15 feet back behind you at the very front of, of this uh, gate. So you're probably at the very back uh-huh. activating all these things at once. Great. Uh, reminder, it is a D, we use a D12 for our initiative uh-huh. in this scenario. Yeah. In all scenarios. Yes, in this game. Uh-huh. In this campaign. In this campaign. Yeah. Nine for my initiative. Okay. Nice. Um, you will not be first, though. Okay. Okay. Derek's first. We can't help it. Derek? 
until the start of my next turn, I'm at 21 AC. So, Derek, Mr. Derek. (laughs) If you not call him Derek, I would slap you. Uh, Top of the round, it is the team leader's turn. Okay. You probably like it now. See if that happens. Pulls out his blade and swings at the goblin. Goblin? Yep. What? Uh, Yeah. Uh, Because they're not aware. Terrible wee folk. Hits. And I had said goblin, but I attacked, right? Yes. yes. Oh my god! <laughs> Who's attacking the goblin? Um, the the whip dude. Why? Great question. Yeah. Let's find out. <laughs> uh, for about six points of slashing damage, as the scimitar swings down, um, and you see the look on this individual's face just go to, fuck, and they will end their turn. Oh, he um, meant to hit you, but he rolled bad, huh? It's uh, Dark's turn, who kind of looks, pauses for a second, and goes up to uh, the goblin as well. Mm-hmm. And will <laughs> unleashing four strikes. Ooh. Oh, shit. Sounds like a monk. Dude, it's like level 20. <laughs> <laughs> level 20 monk. <laughs> yeah, level 20 monk. Yeah, that is. On our team. <laughs> you get a lot yes. more attacks than level 20 monk. So just know, I don't imagine any of these, the goblin's doing saving throws, but... He subtracts a d4 from his next save. Yeah, these are all rolled to hit right now. Uh, yeah, that definitely hits. And second attack. <laughs> second time. Natural one. Oh. Um. Mm. Natural one. Natural one. Okay, I'll figure out something there. Second attack. That one definitely hits as well. enough to take him out. Uh, with uh, the third blow, <laughs> the goblin hits the ground. Um, the tiefling kind of <laughs> drops his weapon and hands up. Okay. You don't have to trust me. You don't have to do what I say right now. You've got fair game at this point, but you're going to blow my cover if you don't go back in that cell. Um, can I insight check to see if it was intentional that he hit the goblin, or was that a critical fail? Go, go ahead and roll an insight check. Okay. Disadvantage. Right? Disadvantage, yeah. I'm still gonna fuck him up though. Twelve. Twelve. He did not mean to miss. He meant to go for them. Okay. <laughs> um... I'll, I, I'll tell him, you better give us a damn good reason right now. Tell me now. I work for an organization. I'm here to stop this group. How long will we be here? I don't know. Get us weapons. Get me my book. I need my book. Roll an intimidation check. Yeah, Froggy. Yeah. I'm gonna, I'm, 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 gonna say, I'm gonna say straight roll. No disadvantage for this. Zach, you've never been hotter. <laughs> <laughs> Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, it's a, it, it, it's very run of the mill. It's a leather binding, uh, hand stitch in pages. Uh, if you look, so much of the writing is in gnomish, okay? Do you need a sample of gnomish? No, that's fine. That's okay. Enough. I'll look for a book I can't read, okay? We can go back to the cell. I gotta dispose of the body now. Okay. I'm coming for you if you don't give me my book. <laughs> and I get back in, in the cell. <laughs> Goes to the shadows. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For flavor, I would love to say that a little bit of my shadow grows as I do that intimidation check. Nice. Um, I'm a turgy. And then when I back down, then it uh, it, it dissipates. And... Yeah, maybe two feet, but he's walking like he's eight. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the body and <clears throat> creates fire in his hand and. <gasps> oh! Oh gosh! I flinch at, at that. <laughs> and he sits down right in front and... and... So which one of you killed him? Who wants to take this? I looked at Derek 
Derek? Does he look eager to take the, the fall? No. Well, not Derek, Dark. <laughs> Dar- Dark is replying to my Dark. I think we should put this on Derek. It was an accident. Derek. <laughs> Derek. No, I know. Dark is great. Fuck Derek. I need to know what happened to it. These torches, they're unreliable. He threatened us with the torch. Hot <laughs> <Caught> fire. <laughs> Nothing we could have done. Are you almost suggesting spontaneous combustion? <laughs> these have these these these, <laughs> these posts are abjured. <laughs> we can't do anything past it. How would we ever because have knew why I was coming in here? What happens if I take the fall? You're gonna get solitary confinement. Horny butterfly. Horny I said hairy. It's Iron Butterfly. Which is like essentially That's a moth. This group. <laughs> the horny butterfly. The horny butterfly. <laughs> All right. Same change with the camera. Yeah. <laughs> We're not calling this episode pilot anymore. It's a horny butterfly. I'll explain what happened. Was it horny or hairy? What, what was it? It just gets the fire piss the body and leaves. Uh, to dark as he leaves. Who's just like, yeah. If anything happens to me, tell Wolfgang, the tall man, where I am, come find me. With the mustache, okay. I don't know where solitary confinement is, though. Oh, I, I don't know either. Here, take, and like, I'll hand in my lockpick. <sighs> this is more Wrangling's specialty, not really mine. Okay, get it to her. Okay, I think I could. All right, and then I'll sit, and I'll try to fucking rest. <laughs> Just like ponder, meditate, analyze over and over and over and over again, mm-hmm. and can I take a short rest. Yes, without your book, you won't have arcane recovery though. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you need your book. What the fuck? That was the whole point. <laughs> uh, uh, let's. You can you can look through it, but I'm pretty sure you have to have your book for fuck arcane rest. recovery. Yeah, well, there's no point to fucking rest then. <laughs> In that case, I'm keyed up. <laughs> no, I haven't. I haven't dealt any damage to him. Okay, it doesn't say anything about the book in this one. Okay. By. Sp- okay. No, 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 no. <laughs> Snap my fingers. Okay. <laughs> summon my wizardly quill okay. that I use to write in my book, mm-hmm. and I will start inscribing elements of my book on the walls. Okay. The the quill is something you have technically like on your person, or are you summoning it from somewhere? It's I I, I summon it um uh from like a pocket Group dimension, scribes. I believe. Okay. Yeah, if it's from a pocket dimension, that's fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, as long as I, no, well, I created. I created out you of You created. Okay, that's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Nothing <laughs> stopping from you doing magic in here, but things can't pass through. Mm-hmm. So if you were summoning it from a spot to here, it would have worked. But since you're just like, whoop, I have this on me, it works. Nice. Um, and I didn't think of this in the moment because I was hot and bothered. <laughs> Is it possible for me to get my unseen servant to the outside of the cell during all that? Hmm. Let's roll a wisdom check. Okay. Nerves were high. Anxiety was high. Disadvantage? No, it's not necessarily ability check. Wasn't great either way. Six. Six. No. You okay. were you were too focused on the moment at hand. You you didn't have enough forethought to give your unseen servant a command. Alright. Um great. So I I'm going to from memory start writing out my uh, my spell book onto the wall um, okay. and study that during my uh, during my hmm. um, 
if you want me to read of an hour. Yeah. If you want me to read what it has in terms of my quill. Um because I have a special ability about replacing my spell book uh in a short period of time. Yeah, there's like a ritual that you can do to make a new book. Mm-hmm. Um just gonna take a slab of the wall me. with you. <laughs> I mean, just in the moment to, to try to revitalize well, I see, my energy. I see what he's trying to do. He's trying to write out his book so that mm-hmm. he can regain spell slots. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, let me, let me. <laughs> we can kind of come back to that moment. <laughs> Great. Uh, if, if you find that it, it works out Great. well. I'll, I'll report back. There are three people come in, and they will open up the cell, and they take you. Cool. And they pull you out. Okay. Uh, as I'm going, though, I am mentally commanding my unseen servant to come with me. Okay. So, unseenly. Do they take him through like a general area where we all are? So this was transpiring while you guys have been mining. Yeah, four and a half hours. So this. No, I'm just saying though, like, so they're taking him away. Is it going past where we're going? We shall find out. Okay. So it says that I can. Uh, replace my book over the course of a short rest by writing with my, with my, my wizardly quill. Mm-hmm. You can replace the book. Mm-hmm. Okay, interesting. So then would there be an, enough time for me to replace the book and analyze enough for arcane recovery? It's interesting that it doesn't re- require materials. Yeah, no, because it's, it's a magical quill that doesn't need any ink, doesn't, doesn't need anything. Makes it happen. Yeah, and then as soon as I, if it does work, as soon as I uh, recover that spell slot, I would snap, and all of the magic goes, all the writing goes away. Works for me. Whoa. If that's how that works, <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> Dissipates. You nice. regain whatever spell slots you needed, nice. wow. or that you can recover. Yeah, just one. Yeah. But, Man, working the system. So, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get more familiar with the Order of Scribes. <laughs> it's nerds, or no, it's wizards if wizards were nerds. Yes. Basically. Fucking <laughs> so um, hot. Yeah. <laughs> You're wearing a long sleeve. Cool. Yeah, I'm just taking my part. Um, All right, yeah, I go just commanding my unseen servant to come with me. I imagine it would have dissipated because uh, it dissipates after an hour, so I, w- I would have re-upped that ritual as well. Did the ritual again yeah. before you got taken. I think he's real black. Comes back up. Um, I'm so happy he was here for this. So bad. You were taken through that same opening space with the rug, the table. Strangely enough, though, you're not brought downward. <laughs> You're brought up that ladder. Mm. Upon climbing up, you step out into a, a very small uh, stone area, three guards at your side, um, and a wooden door in front of you. The doors open, and you are <laughs> thrusted outward, where you collide into like a wooden fence, like that have been uh, pointed to spikes, and you can see down into a pit, and in it rushing up to you, reaching through a claw, and you recoil back and in this deep-setted pit is about ten undead zombies. Uh, That fireball, right? (laughs) Just walking about. Before you can do anything, you are thrusted off to the side, led down a path, push through another door into a hallway and then through another into a beautifully decorated room. Mm. A very nice, luxurious bed with like a canopy set over it. Red, almost silk looking sheets on Mm. top of a very ornate decorated rug. Um, A nightstand off to the side and to your right you see a long dining table and on the very center is a fully roasted pig apple in its mouth, cooked to perfection, uh, and two chairs. One in front of you, and another with an individual in it. This person stands, and as they stand, they just keep going until they're about 11 feet tall. Skinny, slender individual with pale, ashen skin, black lips, bright yellow eyes, bald head, wearing these robes, 
of black and deep, deep crimson red. And he just looks you in. My. What a feisty package for something so small. Come, my young murderer said. They do? He sits down. Care for a drink? Of course. The bottle of wine lifts magically. <laughs> and the cup is pushed to you. Please, <clears throat> drink. You do? You've never tasted anything like this before. It's, It's got a bit of like a Bitterness, but kind of fruity. You're not really entirely sure what it is. Yeah, it's it's something. Uh huh. Yeah, probably. Um, Flesh. Color. Yeah, a combination <laughs> of too sweet and too acidic at the same time for me. Mm-hmm. Definitely for Luca. Um. <laughs> Are you hungry? <laughs> um. Okay. He stands. Takes a knife and fork and starts cutting a bit, ever so gently, placing pieces and slices just... to you. He back down and sits, has his own plate. Please tell me, what is your name? Um, Frogman Dirtfist, <sighs> sir. <sighs> I am Lord Gash. <laughs> you saw for a split second his eyes kind of rolled into the back of his head and like lights flashing within his eyes almost before his consciousness came back and introduced himself. That is quite the life you have lived, if a little mundane and quiet. Um. Yes. Don't do anything stupid. <laughs> no pressure. Kill me, frogman. Kill me. Yes. Why burn this corpse? Well, uh, why resort with such violence when you don't even know where you are or who you're amongst? Sir, I, uh, this isn't why I'm out here. I, I need to get away. I know. Can you help me? Perhaps. If you're looking for a trade, I would require something in return. Okay, um... (laughs) Is there any other way to get out? Is this a spell? This is a spell. You have advantage. Mm-hmm. Oh, failed that. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, oh. Fuck me, ten. Ten, fail. Uh-huh. Your body freezes. Oh my god. Get out. Why would you want to leave? I have a delicious meal prepared. Releases you, you may speak again. Um, thank you. I, um, you know, I, I'm on a mission. But I can offer you the assistance you need. What can you offer? Time. Time is irrelevant for someone like me. Time means nothing for someone like me. As a large, hulking 
undead owl bear crawls out Bitch. of the shadows. <laughs> the tongue hanging out of a hole in the side of its cheek, slopping to the side. We are the final sect, the last force for the cult of the Blood Lord. We are all that remains. What can you offer someone like me where time doesn't matter? If you're the last sect, then time is all you need. You need time to rejuvenate. I don't know your blood, Lord, but with enough time, anything's possible. But I have all the time. What makes yours different? If you're smart, you manipulate it. You know this. Make it your ally. If you have time and it's so bountiful for you, forgive me for saying, but maybe you take it for granted. It's a resource to be used. Yes. And I suppose it loses value in abundance. Tell me why you're valuable. I don't know if I am. Murderer and humble to boot. <laughs> it seems this is a waste of my time. <laughs> <laughs> I have places to be. That blonde haired one's far more interesting. knocks on the side of the wall that you guys are sitting at, and the three guards come back in and take you. See that he's properly dealt with. Give him plenty of time to think about what he's done. Enjoy it. Um, blonde-haired one. When I watched them leave, there was only one blonde-haired one, and it was the one with Wolfgang, right? Yes. Okay. It was a pleasure meeting you. Thank you. Enjoy your days. He walks over to a chair near a fireplace and sits in it. And the fire lights and he pulls open a very familiar book. <laughs> and you are <laughs> that asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Brought out of the room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you were then brought back down below. Mm -hmm. Did you leave your unseen servant behind? It I, followed. It followed you to a T. I mean, here's the thing. I honestly didn't think about it once okay. I got up there. Sure. So, if it, I don't know. Here's here's what what you think if. If I told it to come with me to solitary confinement, and then I didn't give it any more orders, mm -hmm. it would have just followed you. And then stayed there? Mm -hmm. It would have followed you until you were in a space that you okay. felt. So it's probably with me it's still. Okay. <laughs> uh, you were brought de back down below uh, through the same path, walking past the pit of undead. Mm -hmm. um, do, 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 do. Fun for later. <laughs> RBG. Um, mm. I don't think that's. Uh, I don't think it's the current boss. When you head the down uh, the ladders, uh, what, the normal right path that would take you off towards the original cells, you were instead brought to a path directly b before you, okay. uh, which leads into another cell. And upon opening it, they throw you into a hole and you fall. Make a dexterity saving throw. Fourteen. Fourteen's enough. You take half damage to only two points of bludgeon. Okay, great. I'm unconscious. 
<laughs> Compared to five. Are you really? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> but God, I might as well be. I'm, I'm, like, I'm a, I'm a low a HP like, wizard. Wait, really? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. You hit the ground. Damage before. Uh, <laughs> um, you find yourself in a, in a pit about ten feet down. Great. Um, Darkness all around. Dark, I mean, it's not that much of an issue for you, mm-hmm. but it's a less than five foot space. You can't even, well, you could lay down comfortably. <laughs> Most people could not. It's roomy. Even. Yeah. <laughs> you can stretch. Yeah. Um, you hear it. another metal gate above you. It seems to lock close. You feel a presence sits next to you. Uh-huh. I know. Um, and I'll start casting Detect Magic again, ritually. You see a humanoid figure appearing next to you. Mm-hmm. Um, About the size of maybe another deep gnome. Yeah, wh- whatever size category you want to put it in is it works for me. Uh, mm-hmm. Wouldn't be larger than medium, yeah. but so yeah, you can small. make it small size. Mm-hmm. Um, beyond that, there's not much else magic in this room. Okay. Nothing even from the source of where they threw me? You would need direct line of sight on anything that would be magical. You cast why? <laughs> <laughs> not, not in this campaign. Not right now. Yeah, seems legit. <laughs> seems yeah, yeah, legit. yeah. Okay, I'll sit. I will and start thinking again. Okay. Time passes. You are given multiple lacerations. You are brought to the point of unconsciousness at one point. Mm-hmm before you are brought back. You are thrown back into the cell. Right as you land back in with Derek, you're brought back to the original cell that you were in. Um, You're at one HP currently. Okay. How long was he in confinement for? A couple hours. That's it? It's the lacerations, that's that's the shitty part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Oh, it's around that point as you're kind of like getting back up, Derek comes over and helps you as best he can. There's not much he can really do, per se. You were all brought back from your your time working. Was I able to get... So for you. Was I you able to get it all close to Derek's cell so I could hand him some, some of my rocks that I collected? I will say, as you're walking into this space, Derek kind of makes eye contact with you. <coughs> I make it with him. Okay. Slide of hand check. Uh, I'm giving you advantage because he's helping you with this, so it's a straight roll. Oh, straight roll, roll, sorry. Yeah, straight roll. (laughs) (laughs) Just relax. At 20. 12. 12. Let's see. Okay. He kind of, he runs up to the gate, and you can tell he has something in his right hand. And he's like, are you okay? I put and my hand on his hand, and, he... and I go, for now, are you all right? You were budged by you. Okay, I put rocks in his hand. Okay, What's make another hand? one. Um, depending on how I... Uh, make it a straight roll for this one. Okay. Jesus fucking dick. Ten. <laughs> ten. I got a ten as well. So you... Just a quick pass off. Yeah. Uh, you are handed uh, a relatively honed down and sharp piece of, uh, two pieces of wood. Um, you kind of have an idea of what he might be going for. Yeah. He takes the rocks. <laughs> he doesn't really know what you're going for. <laughs> <laughs> I got a rock. <laughs> um, in, in that main chamber area where the rug was, the table where uh, your pack was, uh, you all see as Nesta is pulled aside and brought off from the rest of the group. There's no goodbyes. You continue to usher forward. How many guards are around us? Like 10 or 11. Jeez. Between the seven that we're bringing you in and then the individuals who reside in this room, yeah, there's quite a few people in this space. Uh, I'll say you all have enough time for a quick uh, something to say, a quick thing you want want to do. Where are you taking her? I call out to Olwell. Olwell? Nesta! It's, it's, you're gonna be fine. Uh. <laughs> Great. Olwell <laughs> <laughs> doesn't know what to do. Where are you taking her? 
Someone wants to see you. Who? A boss. Who's your boss? Get the fuck out of here. Strange name. Uh, Pretty strange <laughs> name. Okay. Yeah, I like this Jersey guard. <laughs> hey. hey! It's Philip! <laughs> um, you are brought up the ladder. Professor Philip to you. Professor Philip. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Philip. <laughs> As she's being let off, I'd like to do a bit of peeking and to see if I can spot a scimitar in that room. In the room you're currently in? Yes. Okay. Uh, go ahead and roll perception check. Disadvantage. Mm. One's a exhaustion. One's a Six. <laughs> Six. Ooh. Nope. You see, you actually see quite a collection of other weapons within the space. A wide variety, uh, but nothing that resembles your weapon. <laughs> um, you are ushered up the ladder. And in a similar fashion, you see the pit of undead. Ooh. You are led down a hallway. Can I see any sky? No, it is, it is ceiling above you. However, in this space, I did forget to describe, you would know this as well. Um, this is not a cavern. This is work stone. Work stone. This is all brick. Okay. And there's pillars within this area. This is, was a room, a building, something. Hmm. You're not entirely sure what, but this this alludes to civilization at this point. Okay. You're brought into a similar room where you are thrusted in. The doors are closed. And you see an individual reading a book in the fireplace. Good book. <clears throat> it has its secrets. Puts it on the mantle. <laughs> you were the one with the blonde hair, boy. Maybe I am? Mm. What's he to you? A resource. What do you know of Asmar? Uh, just what I've heard at the temple. I'm so sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. My name is Lord Gish. <clears throat> Mr. Claiborne. My far more interesting life than the smaller one. It appears you know quite a bit about ASMR. Being one yourself. Oh, is that what I am? <laughs> Sits back down in your chair. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know of the Blood Lord? I know a little bit about one. There is only one. <laughs> do you refer to Orcus? Indeed. It seems his name travels ac across the material plane with ease after his initial arrival. My betters failed to lead him to a path of victory. And that damnable cleric keeps me from finding his remains. But with the assistance of some blood magic. <laughs> uh. See, that, that's um, where we might get off on the wrong foot. Oh, I'm sure. You may not be aware, but my friend and I are clerics of the Temple of the Prismatic Moon. Indeed. Great. So, <laughs> uh, we, we go by a different kind of guiding for life. Um, the moon, mostly. Mm. Light, goodness. So blood magic, not really our thing. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks for nothing. <laughs> no power barred by material resistance. If your god is so powerful, how does she stop dead? We 
don't need to stop death. Death mm -hmm. is a part of life. It's part of the cycle. It's what and makes so what moments comes precious. after? It's At least for us. Not for us to know. Who says? Lunaris. And you follow her blindly. I follow her faithfully. Ooh, suck it. <laughs> I suppose that is something I can get behind. He looks to your wrist. It's a shame. It would be nice to bring her back, wouldn't it? I touch the friendship bracelet on my wrist. It's purple and woven with strands of hair. But that is not her will. Faithful, indeed. Your resolve is strong. I have use of you. Your friend, on the other hand, is a coward. Why would you say that? You sack of meat. We've seen how he behaves. He's weak, both physically and mentally. He's nothing more than resource at this point. <laughs> Jesus. He, he's one of the best pupils at our temple. He's. He's, he's in line to become a prison. He moves his finger and you drag across the ground, the tips of your feet scraping as you are drawn towards him. You feel the blood in your body is pulled, like your veins are moved towards him, and the rest of your body is forced to follow, otherwise they would be torn from your skin. <laughs> and he catches you. Don't kid yourself. You know who shines between the two. You know who's stronger, you know who's faster, you know who's wiser. You crave power, I see it. And the only thing stopping you is your faith. He sets you down. <laughs> I could offer you so much more. I cast Word of Radiance on him. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> what do I have to do? Um, that's a con. Con, uh, con save. Um, oh, Word of Radiance. You too. I mean, she's within I'm five just, feet. I'm she was dragged feet. towards him, yeah. Um, as the <laughs> word erupts, it washes over him and... Cute. <laughs> That's the spark. I spit in his face. Yeah! Yeah! <laughs> That's my girl. <laughs> To your space. While that was going on, what have you all been up to? All right, we exist. As, we, <laughs> as you guys are walking in through the cell, Frognand is beaten to shit. He has laceration marks all across his back, blood pouring out of them, and Dark is doing what he can to assist. Um, I come to the bars. How, cl how close to the bars is he? Five-ish feet. He's down on the ground. Yeah. When I see you, I'll actually stand up and approach the bars. Come here. I have an idea. Grab your hand and uh, put all of my... And uh, 
uh, a reddish radiance comes from my hand. Oh, wait a minute. He's on the other side of that fucking bar. You can always try. Oh, I'm going to try to uh, lay on hands. As he reaches through and past the bars, and you are healed. Thanks, Dad. That's what I'm here for, kiddo. Hello, Daddy. Hello, Daddy, baby. In that moment... How many points? Ten. Your intellectual mind kicks in, and you see the healing come through the bar. Are the, all the captors gone? Is no, okay. this is happening very fast. Okay. He's about to get pegged in the head in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you make in that slow motion connection, you realize you just gotta get past the bar. It's fine. Before you're boom, beamed in the head, yeah. not enough to deal damage, but enough to kind of rock you a little bit. Um, not an unfamiliar feeling. You're fine. <laughs> so I, fe- I kind of feel like I would have expected it, being in the situation sure. that we're in. How do you want to take this? Um, I want to dodge it. I don't want him to. I want to. Okay, roll. Should I want him to hit me? Uh, <laughs> roll a dexterity check. Ugh. <laughs> not a save. Dexterity th- save. It's not a saving throw. No. How does an eight sound? <laughs> not with a natural eighteen for me. All right. You're not taking damage, but you do get hit with it. Uh, I kind of look back at the guy who hit me and just. <laughs> uh, he's shorter than you. <laughs> All right. I look down at him. Yeah, totally. <laughs> I bet you feel strong now. Keep moving. You are fushered back into your cell, along with Olwell. Yeah, and I'll be watching exactly where you get into your cell. Mm-hmm. For the record, you kind of look around, and he's immediately put into the cell next to you. One more over. For the record, I did scoff at you. Fuck if I care. <laughs> <laughs> That'll bother him later. <laughs> uh, you two are put back into your cells. Um, for the record, he's not actually my dad. <laughs> I am now. <laughs> but he's my daddy. <laughs> Don't you forget it. Is there anything you all are doing? Oh. I have things I'd like to do once all these motherfuckers are gone. It takes a moment. Uh, your manacles are taken off. Uh, and you are left inside of your chambers alone. I will or lay about on my lovely plank on the floor. <laughs> Wolfgang's back and his arms crossed, legs apart, position of just waiting. Uh, your curly haired <clears throat> friend in there has hands between knees and is rocking back and forth. Ragged breath. Kind of look back. What's wrong with you? <sighs> I don't know what's happening with Vanessa and. Kind of been together ever since. Ever since I found her at our temple, and it was just. She's the best between us. I know that, and I don't exactly know what to do without her. So. Well, if she's the best between you, I'm sure she'll be back soon. Can yeah. I hear this conversation? She likes Blondie. I'm sure she'll be fine. Mm. I'll speak up. Rue, and I'll say, um, hey, she's gonna be fine. And I don't want to alarm you, but that guy's coming for you. What What guy? What, that guy? (laughs) There's some creepy, like, 11 feet tall, and he's a walking nightmare. Um, the boss man, huh? Sounds like he needs a punch in the throat. Yeah, he's... Like me, what do you mean? He's coming for me. I, I don't Who know. Who am I? I'm not sure, but you need to be ready. Are you ready for what? I'm not sure. That's not helpful. Um, okay. So you talk to this guy, the boss? Yeah. Um... What's He's his deal? He's part of a cult. He's part of the cult of the Blood Lord. The cult of the Blood <laughs> Okay, I don't know much about it. Um. Oh, I know plenty about this. Okay. This is the cult of the Blood... This... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Is that ringing any bells are, for me? We are in a very, uh, very bad yes, place. Yes, absolutely. It's, it's ringing bells for you. Um, do you know Lord Gesh? 
You can't say I've heard of him, no. He must be some sort of remnant left over from the battle. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I guess so. He's strong. He can, he made, he paralyzed my body for a second. He's trying to cut me deals. And he said, what kind of a deal? I don't know. He tried to make a trade. I didn't offer him much. Um, what did you offer? Just, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I tried to wax poetic about some bullshit. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, I didn't want to offer him anything real. I said something about time. I'm a gnome. Gnomes last for a long time. Um, <laughs> um, but he seems to live forever, so I don't think he was down for that. Oh, great. Immortal, um, huh? So what the hell? Kylos will <laughs> lean forward on the bars, uh, kind of like two arms through, and put his hands together. Um, well, it seems to me that there's only one of us here that knows about this cult, so why don't we let him speak yeah. clearly, Sorry, who were you? A, a doctor of some sort? <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, thank you, but not quite yet. Uh, professor, oh, professor. Clearly. Professor. And quickly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, you see, this cult of the Blood Ward, they are worshippers of the Prince of the Undead, known as Orcus. Shit. He was succinctly defeated oh, some odd 120 so years ago uh, by a group of individuals and a combination of varying kingdoms. Uh, My grandfather was, was there. Your grandfather was part of the war? He was. Who was he? <laughs> I don't know who you are, so... You don't know who he is either. I'm sure if he was of notable repute in the wars, he was put somewhere in the history books. Quickly you're, and concisely, Professor. Right. <laughs> Yo, Professor, if you're looking for your beeswax, none of it's over there. Continue. Um, yes. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you see, this war known as the Everlost War, this cult was able to succeed in bringing Orcus's domain into our realm, into the material planet, into the material plane. They brought this massive city down upon the land. And these heroes went up against and fought him. They were successful, so much so that they were able to kill him. And it says that the remains was taken by one of the leading men, a Lombard, a sort of scion of Uppenthal. Up and who? Uppenthal, a dwar dwarven god of creation. The remains were taken and sealed away. No one knows anything more than that. Some say that it's only known by those within the group, there is legend that one of the members stayed and devoted the rest of his life defending where it remains. Any chance it could be in these mines? Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Well, he did say that this was the last, you know, few people in this cult, so... Maybe we get out of here, tell it to some kind of guard force or something, and they can take care of them? Even though they are but broken pieces of their once magnificent picture, I doubt it will be more than just getting a city guard or militia to take care of these folk. Tell me, what else did you see? Was there anything else of note? Well, you want um, to yeah. Zombies. Who? Zombies? Yeah, like, fuck. A good chunk of them. Um, they, so, we, there's a ladder out there, right? We went up the ladder, down a hallway, this beautiful brick hallway, and then we passed some fucking zombies. <laughs> um, How many? I don't know, like, ten-ish, I think? Um, and then we went, there was this, um, it was like, like 
have you ever seen that really cool Guillermo del Toro scroll um, <laughs> called Pan's Labyrinth? <laughs> I love that scroll. Yeah. Um, the Bard? Like, you speak of the bard Guillermo del Toro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's fantastic. I love his work. Yeah, in, in one of the scrolls he wrote, um, there's this amazing Canonic. long table that's guarded by a beast with no eyes, but with hands that have eyes like this. Um, and and the table was amazing and beautiful. And like, this is all you, this is all you, you I, I didn't realize how similar it was <laughs> until right now. Yeah. Um, and, and and this was some monster dude. He had eyes, though, in his face, I think. Um, <laughs> Frognet, I know exactly what you're talking about. Great, okay, I take it take it away from here. No, no, <laughs> you described it perfectly. We can move on from that. <laughs> um, Not exactly how luxurious was this room. Oh, it was pretty nice. There was um, this, like, this little, this mammal. It was roasted, had a fruit in its mouth, um, but it was dead. Um, and then there's cups, and they had like some weird nectar in it. It was sweet. It was weird. Um, oh, I do love a good wine. And <laughs> yeah, I guess it was, I didn't like it. Um, Learn to love it. Okay, I'll take your word for that. It's a matter of time. Yeah. <laughs> sweet wine. All right, let's focus <laughs> on what's going on here. Thank you. <laughs> As Nesta, you are brought back into the space. The my door is fists are clenched <laughs> by my side. I told you she'd be fine. Unlocked. <laughs> You've thrown in. <laughs> you, uh, you recognize the individual bringing this person in. It's the tiefling individual. Okay. And they close it. And is it just him? It's just him. Yeah. I'll, I'll motion, you know, I was going to do scroll, but no, it's not a scroll. It's a book. Uh, I'm he looking you, at like, this. Daggers. He I want to, I want did I see that exchange? I would like to have seen that exchange. Roll perception check. I'm going to also roll perception for that. I, I would say uh, the angle you're at, because you're the adjacent cell, and it's complete stone. Oh, it's you would you wouldn't be able to see from your from your vantage. She's at a diagonal. Perception. Yeah. I'm doing perception. It's perception. It's straight up or didn't. disadvantage for this one. <sighs> your cell body just got brought back. So one. Your Nessa's back. Okay, I only have eyes for Nesta. Well, I'm not <laughs> saying that's what's happening. Don't we all? <laughs> hey guys, um, the tiefling also reminds me of a thing. Um. You remember how there was a goblin with him before? Yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah, exactly. What about him? Did you, you fucked did, him? <laughs> <laughs> um, you do work quick, don't you? <laughs> um, you were good. Not, not in that way. Um, he's dead. What? Yeah. What? Um, I, I have this spell that I can do where I put fireballs on things. No, that's a lie. Um, I, um, I, I killed him with my mind. Um, <laughs> and then that's how I got taken up to the if place. If you killed this guy with your mind, how come you're not killing all these guys with your mind? Well, there's a weird, like, magical field that's blocking it. Um, uh, let me rewind. Your buddy's gonna be okay. He had a dislocated leg. Everything's cool with that. It's true. I, I, I'm having no problem walking. Yeah. Oh yeah, if you want to tell the story, I mean, you'd be much better. Oh, no, at no, I mean, you're the one who was kind of the mastermind behind it, so. Oh, wow. Well. Wait, um, Jared, did you guys kill <laughs> the goblin? Yeah. Hi. So the goblin's dead. Um, the tiefling guy might be a good guy. He says that he's working. That guy is not a good guy. No, did no, you no. See what he did to Nesta's hey, face. Has anyone here heard of the horned butterflies? No. Doctor. <laughs> Professor. Come on, Phil. You can do it. Your history check? Disadvantage. Um, regardless, history. he might help us get out of here. Yeah, go ahead. We'll uh, history check disadvantage. At disadvantage. I don't it's, know who it, he is until yet. Until that point of exhaustion's gone. Yeah. Nine. Nine. You have no idea. But he's the key to getting this out. No, 13. Cover or something. 12. 12. Still nothing. 13? No idea. I'll well, try to get Eloise's attention. Okay. I, yeah, when you were brought back, he's he's at, like, people are, like, now trying to, like, fight for control of the 
of the bars at this point. Yeah. Everyone's trying to get a chat okay. in with everyone right now. Mm-hmm. But well, we'll look at you, yes. Well, it seems to me what we need is an opportunity. And if he's coming for that blonde haired fellow over there, oh, yeah, that seems to me like an opportunity. Okay. Um, Ren Gwyn, if you can use those things. Oh, what things? Nothing. Um, never mind. I don't want to say it. Um, Darek? All right. Then yes, sir, you all right. Where'd you go? Where'd they take you? This really creepy tower with this really creepy dude. Bossman. Blood guy. You guys know? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Apparently, frog, this frogman fellow met with him uh, before you did. Oh. What did he want with you? Hi. No, he, oh, he just wants to, you know, raise an army of the dead. Um, oh, yeah, to great. A yes. Fabulous. Yes. Fun goal. Uh, yes. So, uh, I'm... <laughs> Oh well, I'm thinking maybe it's not a great, not a great guy. Maybe, maybe we. Uh, I I might say if it's involved with the cult of the Blood Lord, yes, these are the worst of the worst people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, undead right. worship is not the thing. But he kept calling the word that I hated, and he kept saying was that we would be resources for him. Who? No? Yes, uh, generally speaking, Orcus saw most of the living as just fuel for his undead armies. So next time they come, if they're coming for your blonde friend, that's our last chance to get out of here with all of us alive, I think. Oh yeah, they're coming for your friend because they think, I don't know, they think he's special. Because of reasons. I I don't think think it's good. I think that's our last chance to get him out alive. Okay. Or we let something happen to him. What? We make it out of here. We pass it on to the proper authorities, and we move on with our lives. We're not leaving him behind. Hey, so we'll leave one person behind. That one. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a thought. We're spitballing here. He's in my cell, right? Yeah, he's with you. <laughs> we will not be leaving him behind. Darik, even if I can get this open, what next? What do we do? I have an idea. We kill everybody and leave. Well, if you can, if you can get very it, heroic. Super on board with that idea. If you can get it open, who says you have to open it though? As long as it's unlocked, mm-hmm. you can fake like the the doors close and yes. find your opportunity. Have it unlocked. Wait for them to come and pick up our blonde fellow, and then. Yeah, well, the last time we tried that, Nesta almost got face cut. Hey, clear to the bone. That's okay. That guy is on our side. I've seen the worst that happens. <laughs> they bring you back. Renguin, can you unlock your door right now? Yeah, but... And remember, they're going to be focused on me. How much time do I have? Can I unlock all the doors? Try. So you might be able to. How much, t- how much time do you need to unlock your door? Well, let's see. I'm going to take them let's, out. Let's start there. I'm going to bust it out. So what am I rolling for? These are not actual thieves' tools. Yep. We're trying to use them as such. Yeah. So there's no proficiency with this. Okay. But go ahead and roll a d20 and add your dexterity mod. Can, can I attempt to assist by talking her through everything I learned about the the the, uh, the locks? Go ahead and roll an intelligence check for me real quick. Let's see how much you're Straight roll. roll. Persuasion roll. check against Dominic. 22. Yes. <laughs> you can give her advantage on this. All right. Okay. Which will turn it into a straight check rather than oh, a geez. disadvantage. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then I add my dexterity modifier. Yes. <laughs> what a one. Oh. No. Oh. <laughs> <sighs> fuck. Unfortunately. Put that dice in the fucking garbage. Okay, what? I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna go over to my little woodcot and I'm gonna punch it like I used to see Darek do because I'm really frustrated. Okay. And then go maybe ahead. some shards come off. Who roll, knew? roll an attack roll, d20 plus your strength modifier. Can I attempt with anything that Darik had left over? Is there anything left over from when Darik helped you? Roll one more investigation check. 17. You break off a couple good pieces. It's not as good as the one that you were handed. I don't care. I'm going to try it. You could try again. The DC's a little higher. Okay. Uh, 22 with disadvantage. 22 
22. Oh, you're looking for pieces. Uh -huh. You find more splintered pieces, but you're starting to run thin on supplies on this piece. All right, I'll try my door as well. All right. Okay, so I'm going to try again with a higher DC. This one's higher, and you're at disadvantage because you're not receiving help this time. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can try yours. And this is just with the dex modifier? Just with the dex modifier. Six. Eight. <laughs> These aren't built for picking locks. Dark. Um, did I? What about those rocks I gave you? Did I catch? <laughs> what do you want me to do with rocks? I don't know. Did I catch when um, when he healed Frogman? I didn't do it secretly. Yeah, I would. Yeah, because you guys weren't in your cells at that point. Okay. Um, he didn't. Yeah, he didn't do it secretly. So I your passive not. perception totally caught it. Can I look around the rest of? outside the cell of the rest of the room is there what are the objects around in the room around in the room uh outside of yourself correct yes um directly at your left diagonal um you can see kind of like a stool um probably for like when guards need to be in here and just chilling um beyond that you see the gates across you are completely empty um with another wooden board on the ground you see a hole off to your right with kind of a, uh, a wooden door that swings open and closes. It's where, it's where you go to go. I need someone to make a loud distraction, something to get a guard in here. I suppose I could do something like that. I can reach my arms to the bar, right? You can. I will reach my hand out. Um, kind of like press my face up to the bars um, and I'll cast press the digitation through and there will be faint musical notes as a gust of wind through the room as music starts to play slightly <laughs> tiefling individual steps forward has manacles. If you're looking who done it, it was him. <laughs> I suppose my time in here is enough. It's, it's time you all left. What? What? Hmm? Pardon? I'm not about to keep this up. I'm all getting out of here tonight. Just saying. Um. And on that note, we're going to close tonight's episode. <laughs> no. All right. Or we could not. Yeah. <laughs> or we could just keep going. I would love to. Episode but it is, two. It's, we're, we're getting a little late. We're, put, we're pushing it a bit. Uh, but yeah, that was super fun. All right. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching our pilot episode of Camaraderie and Shenanigans. Uh, before we wrap things up uh, officially, I just have a, a couple of shout outs that I want to do. Um, uh, quickly to uh, Amelia Williams, uh, AKA uh, Coda Bomb on Instagram. Uh, she did all the art that you're going to be seeing on the stream uh, for all the characters. Go Lit. check her out on Instagram, Coda Ooh, underscore woo! Bomb. Uh, Marshall Brown, who uh, essentially was our on-call tech guy for setting up our equipment as we're, we're figuring it out. We're, we're, we're getting there. Um, uh, uh, shout out to Mackenzie, uh, Daniel's uh, wonderful partner, uh, for allowing him to be here and doing this stuff with, <laughs> with us while she has a baby on the way. Um, uh, shout out to Hannah, which is Keegan's lovely partner. Uh, who was not terribly mad about us busting down walls in their home to make this space. It was just a few. I <laughs> rebuilt them. It's <laughs> fine. Yeah. Just a couple. Um, and then lastly, uh, thank you to everyone who's been following us along along this path, friends and family, uh, people who don't know us at all. Uh, thank you guys. This is, this is kind of a dream come true, at least for me personally, um, of doing something like this in front of a bunch of people. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> Two more big shout outs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Two more big shout outs. One to Brittany Law. Brittany! Who, Brittany. We, MVP. We, we would not be here without her help. <laughs> 100%. Uh, 
yeah, she is the best of us. That, yes, 100%. And then, of course, Zach, who you will eventually see the lovely minis we have for these characters, uh, who Zach uh, printed out uh, all these pieces and then painted a good chunk of them as well. Thanks. Um, oh, yeah. yeah. If you've been enjoying the show so far, don't forget to follow us on Instagram and TikTok. We've got videos on there. We'll also be uploading these episodes later on to YouTube. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you 20 Chronicles. At 20 Chronicles. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. 20 Chronicles. Chronicles. Smash that like and subscribe button. No, oh, I yeah. knew someone would say it. Yeah. Yeah. Like and subscribe. Uh, <laughs> Thank you guys very much that. for joining us. Crit that. Crit that. We will see you all next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. We killed the big bad guy. <laughs>